little sharp.
All right, good evening. The regular meeting of the City Commission for Tuesday, November 19th, will come to order. Please silence your cell phones. City Clerk, if you would, call the roll. Mayor Owen? Here. Vice Mayor Colodi? Here. Commissioner Hartman? Here. Commissioner McGurk? Here. Commissioner Sachs? Here. Thank you. Before we go further, I want to acknowledge a couple of former elected officials in the audience. I see former Mayor Jim Vandegrift back there in the back. And my predecessor, former Mayor Jim Hathaway, right here up front. All right, with that, we'll have Police Department Chaplain Laura Berg will give the invocation. Please remain standing after that for the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you pray with me? In this season of thanksgiving and in the spirit of cooperation, we are grateful for another day to be fully present and to be glad in all that this season holds for us. Opportunities to count our blessings, to be blessed, uh, uh, to be able to be a blessing in the lives of others. For the moments to enjoy fellowship and really good food with family and friends. Celebrations and festivities offered by our churches, organizations, and businesses within our beautiful city. And opportunities like this evening to work together for the benefit of all. Keep us mindful of those less fortunate than ourselves who need resources that we together can provide. We ask your blessings over all who watch over, protect, and aid our citizens with great devotion. Now guide the steps and decisions made here tonight by Mayor Owen, our city officials, and city commissioners as we work together toward the common good of all. Bless our efforts to respect one another's differences while striving to achieve goals that benefit our community. May we aim for unity and peace. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City manager, any changes to the agenda? No changes, sir. All right. With that, we've got a couple of oath of offices for newly appointed city officials. We'll start with our city. We'll start with our city manager, and then go to our city clerk. So, Colin, meet me. Can you meet me down here. Okay, if you would repeat after me, I, Khaled Rashidat, a citizen of the state of Florida and of the United States of America, and being appointed by the City Commission of the City of New Smyrna Beach. You got it. <laughs> to serve as city manager. To hereby solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Florida, and the ordinances of the City of New Smyrna Beach, most of which I wrote. No, you don't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and that I am duly qualified, I'm duly qualified to, hold the title to hold the title under the Constitution of the State of Florida, and the charter of the city of New Smyrna Beach, and I will faithfully perform the duties as city manager. Perform the duties as for the city of New Smyrna Beach. Thank you so much. All right.
back it out now. <laughs> All right, Kelly. Want to get down here? All right, family, come on up. Don't be shy. Okay, Kelly, if you would, repeat after me. I, Kelly McQuillan, a citizen of the state of Florida and of the United States of America, and being appointed by the City Commission of the City of New Smyrna Beach to serve as City Clerk. Do hereby solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Florida, and the ordinances of the City of New Smyrna Beach, and that I am duly qualified to hold the title under the Constitution of the State of Florida and the Charter of the City of New Smyrna Beach. And I will faithfully perform the duties as City Clerk for the City of New Smyrna Beach. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, exciting new chapter for the city. Thank you to the families of these two great employees for loaning them to us for as much time as you do the many nights and weekends and long commission meetings and the prep for that. It's not unnoticed. We appreciate it. So thank you all. Next item up, the retirement of Shane Riggle, chief. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, everybody here tonight. This is a, uh, a very bittersweet moment um, for me and for the, the rest of the police department. Um, tonight we are going to try and say goodbye to one of our long-term uh, leaders in the agency, uh, and then we're going to promote uh, his replacement, if you will. Um, so Shane, why don't you join me up here for, for just a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lieutenant Shane Riggle, and uh, I, I will tell you that without question, if you ask anybody in law enforcement in this county or in this central Florida area um, to name a face that belongs to the New Smyrna Beach Police Department, it's Shane Riggle. It's the face, it's the hair, it's everything. <laughs> you ask law enforcement officers, you ask media people, whatever it is, they'll, they'll talk about Shane because he is the face of the agency. Uh, he, he grew up in the agency, started here in 1999. Uh, he's a graduate of New Smyrna Beach High School. Um, Shane rose up through the ranks. He was a patrol officer. Um, probably his, his most uh, well-known for assignment was in narcotics. He, he did some undercover narcotics work here in, the, in Volusia County, and uh, he, he excelled at it. Uh, he was a sergeant. He was my uh, special operations sergeant when I first got here, and um, I was smart enough to promote him to lieutenant. When you, when you see how people react when you take them out of their comfort zone, it says a lot about who they are as a person, who they are as a leader, 
and their character that they exhibit. I took Shane way out of his comfort zone uh, when he got promoted to lieutenant. <coughs> Uh, I gave him a lot of responsibility that really wasn't um, completely police oriented. Uh, I threw him into the budget and the, the administrative part of this job. It's not easy, folks. Um, John, close your ears for a minute. <laughs> the finance people and stuff like that are not the easiest folks in the world to work with because they're, they're like, they're, they're down to pennies and stuff like that. Shane not only did that job very well, but he forged relationships with the folks that work in finance and, and the other parts of the city that, that make this department run, and he works very, very well with them, and he did an outstanding job in his last few years here. Um, we're doing this tonight. Uh, Shane actually has a, about another week and a half left here in the agency, but we've got the Thanksgiving holiday coming up, and then right after... Um, he retires at the end of the month. Uh, he's taken off to Venice and um, going to wait around in the, in the water over there. <laughs> Venice, Italy, not Venice, Florida. Uh, so we really didn't want this to get too far away from us. So tonight we're, we're here to thank Shane for his service to the city of New Smyrna Beach for 20 years and also to thank him for being our friend. Uh, as I will tell everybody here, uh, both uh, present and, and past law enforcement officers and, and folks that have worked for the New Smyrna Beach Police Department. Once you're in this family, you're always in this family. So Shane will always be a part of this family. And with that, we're not going to tell any stories, but listen, if, if y'all are going to be around Friday night, uh, we're going to be down at the brewery where we're going to tell the stories that would be completely inappropriate to tell here tonight. So feel free to come down there and, and do that with us. Um, Part of what we do here in the police department uh, when we send our, our family members off to uh, the next chapter in their life is we want to commemorate what their, their service has been to the city. And to do that, we put a bunch of stuff that they've acquired over the years uh, in their different uh, assignments and stuff into a shadow box. So this is Shane's shadow box. blink of an eye it was just uh, it was just yesterday I was all I wanted to be was a police officer and uh, again I, I blink my eyes and I'm standing up here today taking this shadow box with all these memories in it that uh, I, I can't believe it's gone I, uh, I couldn't have asked for anything more out of a 20-year run anywhere as you know I'm a pretty positive thinker and I'm a, I'm a thankful guy so I am thankful I'm thankful for what uh, for what I've done here. I'm thankful for the people that I've worked with. And, and you know, I'm thankful to my first responders out here, my brothers and sisters that throughout the years have been by my side uh, at my scariest moments. Um, at some of the most challenging, mentally challenging moments in my life. Uh, they were there for me. So I want to thank them for that. I, I really appreciate them. I want to thank, uh, you know, my city government here. It's, uh, it hasn't always been easy putting this uniform on, and uh, I've said this before. I appreciate how you've run this city, and because I have a city of New Smyrna Beach patch on this uniform, it's just been a little bit easier some days to put it on. There are other municipalities that I don't believe can say that, so thank you. Chief, I want to thank you. Uh, just as you said, I, I came in, and you took me out of my comfort zone, and uh, you pushed me hard, and you made me better, and I thank you for that. I thank the citizens. You know, it's been a privilege and an honor serving them. It's been, uh, they've been gracious to me, and especially on days when I was the bearer of bad news for them, they were, they were always good to me. You know, I want to thank my friends. I've got many here that work at the city and many that don't, and uh, they've been here for me as well. 
you know, on my good days and my bad days. Just being my friend, I, I appreciate that. To my family, uh, my mother, a beautiful person. I lost her to cancer a few years ago, and uh, you know, she she always taught me to find the good in uh, in everyone, and and to be gracious no matter. And I thank her for that. My father, in here tonight, I uh, he instilled a work ethic in me that uh, that got me here. Quite frankly, 20 years. And uh, he always taught me to do the right thing, no matter the audience. And uh, that has worked out well for me. To my children, you know, 12-hour shifts are a long shift. And uh, you come home at night and you're tired. And you just want to get this gear off and relax. But uh, you're thinking, if I can just get through the door and get this stuff off, you know, I'm, I'm good. But you open that door and here they come. And they're uh, sitting on your boots now. And their legs and their arms are wrapped around your calves. And they're asking you to walk around the house with them. And you're thinking, I, I wasn't sure I was going to get to the door. Now i got 30 pounds on each leg. And then, and then I take a step, and, uh, and then another step. And before I know it, uh, I've taken three laps around the house with kids on my feet. And, uh, you know, I thank them for teaching me that uh, if I have love in my heart, there's nothing I can't do. So, listen, it's been a great run. I don't know what the next 20 years is going to bring, but I promise you it's going to be an adventure and it won't be boring. So, so with that, uh, it's just time to say goodbye. So thank you all. Okay, with, with Shane leaving us, obviously we have a, a I won't even say replacement. I, I don't know that you can replace a guy like Shane, uh, but we're certainly going to try. Um, Chris Kirk. Um, Chris Kirk is, is one of those guys that you look at, you just say, oh my gosh, what, look at the potential that this young man has. Look at, it, it, he's another one like, like Shane, where every time I've challenged him, he stepped up to the plate. Uh, he's uh, a Central Florida product, uh, graduated from University of High School in Central Florida, um, got his bachelor's degree from UCF. Won't hold that against him. <laughs> and uh, he, he just recently graduated from the University of uh, Louisville's uh, uh, Southern Police Institute, uh, the Administrative Officers course, which is their highest level course. Chris just didn't graduate. When I went up there and told him, when he went up there, I said, look, you're in New Smyrna. There's a standard here that we expect out of you. Well, he accepted that challenge, and he graduated number one in his class. This is a class that has, yeah, I mean, that's a big deal. This isn't just some, some police officers from around the central Florida area that goes uh, to this school. These are law enforcement leaders from across the country and around the world that go to this class, and Chris is, was their number one graduate. This is exactly what we're looking for. When we, we talk about uh, our principles of extreme ownership leadership, Chris exemplifies those principles. Uh, I'm challenging him the same way that I've challenged Shane. He's going to take Shane's position. So Chris comes to us as, as a former patrol officer, 
Um, he was a department training officer. He's been on the SWAT team, just as Shane has, uh, and now he, he's going to take that next step up. So this will be a big challenge for him, but I know he's up to the task. So we've already done his, uh, his, his promotion, but tonight we're going to do his uh, ceremonial pinning. Now, when you retire, you get a big old shadow box with a bunch of nice stuff in it. <laughs> when you get promoted, you just get a plaque and a frame. <laughs> because we expect a lot out of him. And we're going to hold him to it. So come on up, Chris. Yeah, yeah, you can, you're, you're kind of wearing it now. We'll, we'll take all this stuff off when you retire. So uh, when we do our ceremonial pinning, we always ask uh, a loved one, significant other, to come up and do that pinning. Uh, because if I was going to do it, I'd stick him right in the chest. So, Kaylee, you're up. It's like watching UCF play football. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we take this first. privilege of following Shane through my whole career. Uh, I was his first recruit. He was my first training officer. And then just by chance, I've kind of woven my career to follow his. So I think it's really fitting that I end up here taking on the challenge that he took on. Uh, I'm excited to be able to take on that challenge as, as he moves out the door and I move into that spot. It's been great to have him as a mentor. I appreciate the challenges that Chief Coffin's laid out for me and all the people that have helped me kind of climb that way. Uh, so I'll continue with that challenge and uh, do my best. Thank you. And just real quick before I, I go over there and sit down in my quiet little spot over there, um, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, ask the law enforcement officers and family to stand up for just a minute. Uh, so if y'all would, please stand up. Uh, that includes the folks that, that used to work for us that were here tonight. These folks are, are here tonight because we are a family. Fonda, you're in the family, please. <coughs> when we talk about family in, in the police department, then, then we mean this. Uh, we're, we're very close. These folks aren't getting paid to be here tonight. They're here because they appreciate what Shane and Chris have done for the agency and, and where we're headed. So from me personally to y'all, thank you very much for your service and thank you for being here tonight. for folks to clear out. Okay. 
Next up, we have a presentation by the American Cancer Society Relay for Life Walk presentation. Sir. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Ritter. I'm with the American Cancer Society. I'm a community development manager for uh, Volusia County. And I'm here to talk about the Relay for Life of Southeast Volusia. Uh, it's taken place for, I want to say, well over 20 years probably down here uh, in New Smyrna. Uh, this year, our theme's uh, Sporting for a Cure. It's going to be Friday, May 15th, 2020. Um, and we'd always had a lot of support here from the city of uh, New Smyrna. And right now, we're just asking for your continued support. Uh, last year, you had had a, a city team that raised, I want to say, well over $1,500. So we just asked that um, you would have a team again this year. And your finance director, John, has uh, agreed to step up and help with that. <laughs> So hold him to it, please. All right. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's on our committee, our planning committee for the event. And actually, this year, we're actually moving down to the city of Edgewater, though, for the first time to their Whistle Stop Park. Um, they've uh, asked us to come down to there and give us a chance down there to grow the event. So um, we're just here to ask for your continued support and hopefully have a, a city team once again this year and uh, perhaps consider being a monetary sponsor of any kind if you can. So that's what we're here for. Excellent. Thank you for hosting that event for the community and and the, all that you all do in the in the community. And so, John, thanks for stepping up to to, to run a team. And uh, Kyle, if you if you would, maybe we can. I don't, I don't know what we've done in the past, but I would say, Commissioner, are we su are comfortable supporting whatever we've done in the in the past. And then, yes. um, so yeah, if you can work with them, what we've done in the past, and if there's any other ways we can step up, if, feel free to bring that back back to us. When is the event again? So that's on May 15th of 2020. May, yeah, so we've got some time. So just yep. talk to them and if there's other ways we might can help in a small way, feel free to bring that back to us. All right. All right. You're never going to get rid of me now. <laughs> His business card's right there in front of you. You can grab it. <laughs> All right, good. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, next item. Children are our future of Volusia County. I think... Michelle, you're going to lead this one off. I'm just going to um, take a moment to introduce. Um, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Michelle Valance, Capital Projects Manager. Um, I'm just going to introduce Constance Jones here, and she'll tell you about um, her nonprofit organization for a later agenda item for action. Um, it's Children Are Our Future, again, nonprofit organization with an immediate goal locally to bring all inclusive playground features um, more widely available throughout our city. Um, so Constance will tell you a little bit about what she's been working on, and I'll be back to see you in a little bit. Okay. Thanks, Thank Michelle. You. Thank Thanks, you, Constance. Michelle. Thank you, Mayor and the Commissioner, Commission Board. I don't do this every day. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, but my name is Constance, a.k.a. Mama C, and the children of Volusia County, um, nicknamed me Mama C because I couldn't pronounce Constance very well. So I just retired from working with abused, abandoned, and neglected children with the Department of Children and Families after 17 years. And when you get ready to retire, you're thinking, okay, what am I going to do with my life when you've worked your entire life? Um, so that's, that's where I was in 2016. 16, and then that's how I came up with Children Are Our Future of Volusia County. Um, I saw the good, I saw the bad working with these children. I especially um, have my heart with um, special needs children, which I have named special kind of perfect children. Um, I do fundraisers for children that either have insurance or they do not have insurance, um, depending on what their diagnosis is. And with all the children that I have sponsored within the last three years, I've come to find out that most of them are special needs children. Um, also, with me living here my entire life in Volusia County, I've explored the parks and the parks just, to me, aren't up to par as far as our children that need a little bit more help with activities of daily living. Um, so there's the, that, there, there's the park. <laughs> um, the glider that 
I would like to introduce to New Smyrna is a pirate ship all-inclusive glider. It holds two to three wheelchairs and it has, um, it can hold up to 15 children on top of the wheelchairs. Um, so all the children, whether they're in a wheelchair or they're everyday kids that do not need extra help can interact with their friends. So they're not sitting at the sidelines um, just watching their friends have fun. Um, along with my journey with helping children that are very sick and doing fundraisers for them, I have come, come upon a family that I've been sponsoring for two years. Um, some of you may know Zoe, Zoe Adams, her father, her brother Zane, who is her best buddy. Um, they play at one of your parks here. I believe it's Manatee Park. I'm not familiar with your parks, so, but I went down and I saw it, yeah. Um, Zoe has San Filippo Syndrome, which is a, it, it's a dementia in a child. So if you know what an Alzheimer's is in an, in an adult, you'll understand where Zoe is. Um, Zoe's favorite playground is Manatee Park, and so is her brother's. Now, I would like to see Zoe and her friends be able to get on this glider if, if, it, if it happens. I've been raising money for this for two years. Um, I didn't especially come here to ask for money. I'm, I'm coming here to present what I believe would help all the children of Volusia County. And if this is installed, then I'm hoping that other cities will take off and follow suit. Um, JJ has been sponsoring me, the father. He's been following me. I've been following Zoe, following Zane. Um, and my thing is, it's just, I just don't want to see any children left behind and I see too much of it. But the rock and ship glider um, is my Christmas present, hopefully, to the children of Volusia County. And that's one other thing, I wanna read you my mission. Okay. We assist children with severe medical diagnoses with or without insurance and assisting families with life-changing tragedies detrimental to live happy, healthy, and safe lives. 95% of our fundraising is with our community biker family. In the last year and a half to two years, I've raised $4,000 towards the pirate ship, the rocker. Do we have a picture of it? There was, there was one in the agenda package for sure, yeah. Okay. Yep. There it is. As you can see, it holds quite a few kids, and then there's a ramp for the wheelchairs, or children, even if they're on crutches, to be able to get up there and interact with their friends. So that's basically what I'm asking is for your help. I have another fundraiser coming up December the 14th, and it is a, bike, it is a poker run with my biker community, um, and I will be donating more money towards it. So I, I, my biggest thing is just to, I just need some more help. And Zoe's from down here and her, her family, so it's fitting to have the pirate ship be here in New Smyrna. And it will be the first of its kind. There is not another one. I explored it. Okay. So, and that's what I'd like to say. That's it. Thank you, Mama C, for being here You're with welcome. us and sharing your... Uh, your your passion on this and it's it's sad to me it's a reality but it's sad that f your previous career was a necessity and then what you're doing now I mean you wish you could wave a magic wand to make all of that go away but I'm so thankful there are folks like you that you. step up and serve in those spaces that are so 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 much need so thank you for for doing that and, and thank you for having it. me yeah absolutely so the the there's an agenda item later gentlemen that we'll talk over later in the agenda 
that talks about this, and Michelle will present at that time. So there's really no no action needed at this point, but we'll we'll get to that in a moment. So thank you. Next item up is public participation. So this is your chance to be heard on any item on the agenda, uh, especially those under consent agenda or the administrative items, new businesses, anything under ordinances, second readings, and public hearings, you'll be able to, to speak on those items at that time specifically. So any member of the public wish to speak on anything on the agenda? Yes, ma'am, come ahead. If you want to queue up after her, you're welcome to come on down to the to the front right there. Grab one of those front seats if you want to speak after that. Give your Hi, name and address. Um, Kathy Holthouse from uh, 918 Magnolia Street. Um, we thought we were going to be on the gym tonight, but um, I guess we didn't make it. So I just wanted to um, thank you for sending the officers over to 2nd Street, where I am, and uh, monitoring the traffic. Just the presence there has actually slowed down the speed of um, a lot of the a lot of the traffic that's been coming from Edgewater during the time that I usually walk my dog. So thank you very much for showing up and sending out the other officers. Because seeing that nice white car with two officers with a radar gun really has helped out a tremendous amount. I also would like to give you an update on my student who was hit in front of um, the Presbyterian Church over a year ago, and I sent every one of you a letter. <clears throat> Her name is Jordan. She just turned 18. She is no longer able to produce dopamine in her brain because of being hit by a car. She was wearing a helmet. And uh, she just this week had to sign a, um, a power of attorney over to her mother because they don't expect her to live until she's 25. So I think that if we don't do something on the other end of the street and something else happens, that this is going to be neglect. I really wish that you would consider what is going on with the last speed bump to all the way to Andrew Street, where it's just a freeway. So please pay attention to it. Really think about it. We've already lost one child's father, and uh, my student's not going to make it to where she should be. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I may, sure. the item she's talking about is under the CM report. Okay. So. All right. So we will have a chance to talk about it then. Other public participation? Yes, sir. Hello, Mayor, Hello. Uh, Commissioner Board. Thank you. Um, I'm JJ Adams. Uh, my daughter is Zoe Adams. I'm going to speak a little bit about what Constance has been talking about. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to thank the police officers. Thank you, EMS service and all that stuff. Thank you. Um, my daughter has San Filippo syndrome. Basically, what that is, it's uh, dementia. Um, they gave my daughter about a year and a half to live about a year and a half ago. So she's kind of beat the odds. She has since stopped talking. Um, she's gone deaf in her left ear. She's 47 pounds. She should be weighing 81 pounds. I have actually taken care of her funeral arrangements. <clears throat> we keep fighting the fight, and that's what we do. We fight the fight. It's nothing bad. It's down. It's okay. I'm not here for pity by any means. I'm just trying to share the awareness of Zoe. She is one of three in the state of Florida right now. We just lost a, a child, 11-year-old, who is pretty much my nephew uh, about two weeks ago. We lost nine kids in six weeks from this disease. There's no cure. There's no treatment. I just want you guys to take the time and read up on it, get some, you know, educate yourselves, if you will, community, everybody. She's been a big part of this community. She's been a big part of Edgewater, where I used to live, and now New Smyrna Beach is my home, and I love it here. I love the community. I love everybody about this place. Nobody should do this. Nobody should have to go through this, and we are. But um, I thank you for your time, and just uh, take a little bit of time tonight or in the near future and just read up on it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. City Commission. <clears throat> a 
and guests and staff. Uh, first off, I'd like to say uh, I'm sorry for what you're going through. My name is uh, Bob Stearns. I live at 5 River Walk Drive, Unit 503 in New Smyrna Beach. I've been a permanent resident of New Smyrna since uh, 2006 after visiting here since 1970. So I'm very familiar with uh, what goes on in New Smyrna. I'm here tonight to speak in favor of an item on the agenda number 7B, which is a presentation uh, proposal by owner McKinley Coffin. This is a single family dock in front of 400 North Riverside Drive along the Berry Canal. I previously own, why this is important to me, I previously owned property at 620 North Riverside Drive and had a dock there. I am very familiar with this water tributary area and the limitations it has for navigation. I wish to note that another proposal for planning and zoning and the city commission ultimately may be coming in the near future. This proposal will be part of the Riverwalk condo project to add 96 docks along the Berry Canal and the Indian River North. I am strongly opposed to the Riverwalk Marina project which would further reduce navigational passage and cause safety and environmental issues. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? <clears throat> We'd like to speak after this gentleman if you want to come on down to the front and be ready when he's, yeah, go ahead, sir. If anybody else would like to speak, you can come on down to the front and be ready. Uh. City Mayor, Council, thank you very much. L.D. Balmer, 915 Magnolia Street. Been there many, many, many years, as you know. I just wanted to say thank you for what you've done for our street in calming the traffic. Uh, I still sit on my porch. I still see a lot of speeding. I know you took a serious look at it a few days ago. I'm just asking that we take as much action as you as you would please. There's many stop signs on uh, other streets that surround us. All the other streets around us are at 25 mile an hour. Uh, we've asked for slower speed, but we would love more uh, speed bumps, uh, more patrolling if at all possible. I do have a daughter and grandchildren that live on Live Oak that walk there a lot, so uh, we do thank you for all you've done, and we're just asking you to, to give it one more serious consideration. Uh, I live near the south end of the street, as the lady said, and uh, we still get more speed than, than certainly uh, I think our street deserves. Uh, we're in the center of New Smyrna Beach. We want to keep you know the charm and keep it safe. The housing is uh, done very well. There's hundreds of people, uh, many people, I don't know if hundreds, but many that want to move into our neighborhood. And we would certainly like for you to continue to give that all the consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Good evening, city manager, mayor, commissioners. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Ragsdale. I live on Magnolia. I'm sure you all know me. Uh, there's one thing that I, uh, I definitely want to read out, and it's the core statement of uh, the vision of the city itself. It says, enhance, protect, sustain our communities while uh, being good stewards of our resources. Well, the protection, uh, we feel protected, but the problem is, is our street, we don't feel protected on. Uh, the city manager and the uh, commissioner actually walked our street here not too long ago, and they see the problems, and they know that it's there. What I'm asking all of you is to consider uh, putting more speed cushions down the road that we need. We know the two that we have there have worked, have slowed things down. But in a lot of cases, 
vehicles still just fly over it. So what I ask of you is to please consider and get us on the agenda so we can go ahead and get this thing wrapped up. And we know these things can be removed. Uh, if things don't work out, you can always pick them up. I know some of you are against it, but I wish you'd just consider where we live. If you live there, you'd be asking yourself the same thing. Do we need them or not? And I ask for you to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a question? Sure. We, um, I believe we're doing a study to determine whether or not we were putting traffic onto the <coughs> neighboring streets. Or where, where are we at with that? Are, are we doing that? We, we did, if you look in the CM reports, there's actually a, a study that the police department did um, before and after the uh, traffic uh, cushions, and it's attached, and I'll talk about it at the CM report. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> if you'd like to speak after her, if you want to come on down. Bobby Hollers, also Magnolia Street, and I'm sure you know who I am, too. Um, thank you all uh, for everything that you do. Uh, we appreciate it was here earlier today. Appreciate, um, I feel like you, you know, you all have a vision for this city that at its core is good. And um, we need to make sure that we keep going in that direction. I live on the north end of the street. I'm kind of the, one of the people that's, out of the zone that was the first squeaky wheel. So right now, you guys have addressed some things on the south end of the street, which is great. They appreciate that very much. And it has, I think, diminished the number of vehicles that come down our street. I don't remember the exact count, but I believe in that report that is the case. However, what has happened is, what I said was hap would happen, <laughs> they hit that last speed hump which is in the middle of the street. We have 13 blocks. The last traffic calming measure is at 6th Street. It's a straight shot right down to me at the, at the church. Every single day of the week, every single night of the week, sometimes on Saturdays when there's a wedding, and then Sunday during church services, there are vehicles parked on both sides of the road for at least one and a half to two blocks. Those vehicles r continually get sideswiped. Their mirrors knocked off. All the time. There are people that are, I mean, I hear screeching tires all the time, people honking, obscene gestures because somebody's trying to get out of their vehicle and get across the street. There's kids walking, all kinds of people all the time. People come around that corner flying and just gun the gas because they know that they've got six blocks to go before they hit anything. Coming from the other direction, They've just been slowed down by a couple of traffic humps, a couple of stop signs. They hit that last one, and guess what they do? They try to make up time. So coming down the rest of the way to my end of the street, especially late in the evening, overnight, early morning, they don't even pause at that stop sign. They just fly right through it. Now, if there were traffic humps along there, they would have to slow down a little bit. Maybe not you know, to 10 miles an hour, but they're not going to be going 60, which is what we see. We have more neighbors that are coming at the next meeting. They were here, but we weren't on the agenda as we were supposed to be. But again, there are more of us that are still concerned. We really appreciate what you've done at one end of the street, but it's simply not enough. And I'm not going to say we're going to put this to bed, because if we don't get what we need, we're going to continue to keep squawking about it. So... We need what we need. Please deliver. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Good evening. I'm Rose Pish. I live at 1110 Magnolia Street. And I'd like to say thank you for everything you've done on Magnolia Street so far. Um, and I echo the other speakers who say that there is still yet some more work to be done. There continues to be speeding. Um, and I don't know what the total solution is, but you've got some really fine people working here at the city who could probably come up with some really good solutions that would calm the traffic further on Magnolia Street. The other thing I'd like you to also look at is, and I'm not sure where this idea came from, um, but an awful lot of people park their vehicles over the sidewalks. 
So when you combine vehicles that are parked over the sidewalks with very fast driving traffic, like what you have on Magnolia Street, you have pedestrians that are forced to walk out in the roadway on uh, speedily traveled and heavily traveled areas. And it's, you know, just a simple thing. It's, a, uh, um, you know, it's not going to ruin my life, but it's certainly an inconvenience and I think has the potential to cause someone some injuries from vehicles that are not watchful. So again, I thank you for what you've done and I believe we have a little further to go. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone would like to speak after Shy, if you come on down here. Hello Go ahead. again. Hello. I guess traffic calming measures is the topic of tonight, That's so I decided to chime on in. All right. Um, Name and address, just for the record. 541 Washington Street, New Smyrna Beach. Um, I think we need to be lumped in with the Magnolia crew. I thought that we were going to be on the agenda as well to talk about Washington Street. Um, I haven't seen any police presence. Um, I mentioned that the tree was covering the 20 mile per hour sign. That tree still hasn't been removed at limb that's covering it. So it would be nice to have something happening on Washington Street um, before something tragic happens. And unlike what the young lady said about it not destroying her life, it would destroy my life if one of my kids get hit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, seeing no others queued up, we'll close public participation. Next item, consent agenda. There are, I don't know, A through F, however many that is, six items on the consent agenda. Does anybody wish to pull anything? We'll begin with the vice mayor. Anything to pull from the consent agenda? Item C. Okay, uh, is that it? Uh, yes. Anything, Commissioner Sachs, to pull from the consent? Nothing. Okay, Commissioner McGurk, anything to pull? No, I'm good, thank you. Nothing, Mayor. Okay. Do I have, hey, let me make sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, do I have a motion to approve consent agenda items A through F, excluding C? So moved. Second. Okay, City Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Vice Mayor Colony. Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Vice Mayor, item C. <laughs> There's been considerable uh, discussion on this project. Uh, the last thing was talked about was increasing the uh, length of the structure uh, from what it is now to uh, many times greater uh, with the idea it may prove some benefit to the amount of sediment that accumulates between uh, the island and the mainland. Uh, uh, we've received information that at this time the, uh, the state will share the costs of the additional design. However, at this time they say there's no money available uh, to perform the actual work. The actual cost to extend the bridge from what is proposed is estimated at $1.6 million. Uh, I personally can't support us uh, spending that much additional money when we can solve the problem without spending it. So I just want the rest of the commissioners and the public to be aware of that. Okay. Any other comments on this item, Commissioner Sachs? Mr. Mayor, a question for staff. Um, if we do expand the spans and not do a causeway, Will FDOT, if they find the money, um, expend 75% of the share? If they have the funding commissioner and they are okay with us going with this design, they will do that. But at this point, they don't have the additional uh, funding for the actual construction. So um, they are funding 75% of the additional design but the construction and the CEI is not at this point. Uh, another question, uh, is there significant evidence that uh, opening up the span will improve the flow? I guess it depends who, who you ask. <laughs> um, 
The initial uh, designer, I think, when they did the study, I don't think they uh, they estimated or they uh, figured that there would be any additional uh, impact in that area. But then as a result of the residents asking for this, I think they did another study, and, and Kyle is here to ask further questions on that. I, I was uninvolved with that one, so. Kyle, would you be kind enough to share any thoughts? Thank you. As, as part of the design, they'll have to do a uh, hydraulic analysis. And obviously with the, you know, the cross-sectional area will be greater. So um, there'll be additional flows, but the flows will be spread out over a surface area, which is greater. So therefore it will reduce the velocity of the water. So it should help the water quality as well as scouring. So that's, that's the whole reason behind it. Do you expect scouring, but in a different form or different mm -hmm. area? Not so much. Um, as a matter of fact, one, one of the reductions we're going to have going to a four span 160 foot would be we're going to use a uh, more of a concrete rubble material at the end bents, at the, at the abutments, at the approach, in lieu of sheet piling. So the cost differential between a 40 foot and 160 foot span bridge is only about $237,000. Yes. So there is some savings with going, going with the longer bridge. Will there be uh, any extensive changes or damage to the mangrove shoreline? Yes, uh, that's one of the, uh, the major tasks. You know, the um, uh, estimate for the additional fees is about two hundred eighty-four thousand uh, dollars. Originally, FDOT denied participation through FHWA funds. Um, you know, we didn't accept that. Say, so let's go. Please go back. So they went back to the central office and they concurred they're going to participate 75% of the cost. It comes out to be about $213,000 of that. Um, so um, with, with that, what was the question again? I forget the question. Yeah. Uh, well, the general, oh, I forgot. Yes, the, yeah. <laughs> the uh, categorical um, type 2 exclusion, uh, the PD&E. Yes. In, in fact, we're going to impact more mangroves when we're lengthening the bridge, so we're going to have to do some off-site mitigation. So we'll probably go to the Swoop site or the Indian River Lagoon site. And that's why probably the majority, 70% of the cost for that, the $284,000, the consultant is all environmental related. Because uh, there's, you know, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, Marine Fisheries, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, the small sawtooth fish. You have to do all these studies um, as a result of widening that bridge span. Oh, so that's only incumbent upon widening. We wouldn't have to have all those other agencies engage. We wouldn't have to do the categorical exclusion to study, which is very involved, yes. Yes, uh, I wish we had more significant, substantial evidence that would improve uh, water quality. Uh, for me, it seems that it would. Uh, we viewed the Veterans Bridge up in Daytona, and we discussed spans and, and buttresses, and w we found that the more buttresses that they put in there, it turned out, in that case, it, deplete, it diminished the flow of water. So it, it is a significant amount of money, but at the same time, we, we do have water quality issues, so I just keep wondering, from a layman's standpoint, are we really benefiting by opening up those spans? And, uh, and I guess you're not a scientist, so you might not be able to answer it either. Well, it is one of the justifications used to um, support the additional funding by DOT. That's in the supplemental agreement. Can and, we, we, and we are, by the way, trying to seek additional funds. So I spoke with the River to Sea today, um, and as well as our DOT liaison. So we're going to keep fighting for additional funds to support the Currently, we have $834,000 uh, program for fiscal year 2022. Uh, and there's no more funds left in that account because they go up to five years, so it's programmed through 2024. So we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to search, continue to look for additional support dollars. I am also concerned about the additional monies, but then the quality of the river. Uh, one more question. Can we mitigate those mangroves on-site instead of off-site? Well, there's, there's no room. Okay. To mitigate. 
So we already, we already have to do, you know, TIFT agreements and TCEs. We've got to do temporary construction easements. There's uh, simply not sufficient area to, to replant. And staff has a viewpoint uh, to support or not support the, the spans instead of the causeway? I'm just following through on the, uh, the input we received at our public participation meeting. Thank you. Appreciate the help. One quick question, Khaled, for, for you to make sure I'm clear. Um, if we approve and, and fund this, obviously this we're still short $1.6 million in funding for the overall. Can, do we then basically have the plans in hand and we can do either or, and the FDOT funding is there if we need it for the shorter one, and then if we can find funding for the other one, we can always do that, or are we? Well, if the original design was complete, and this is now, it's like a new design, it would be one thing. But I'm not sure if they stopped the original design and they now doing the, the new one. Is that what they're no, doing? They're, they're only at 15% 15, uh, 15 design and grade. Yeah. So they're stopped at this point in time until they get a notice to proceed to move forward. So we're basically choosing tonight in this agenda item to, to pursue either the longer or the shorter. Okay. And if we pursue the longer, we're short one point. As it sits right now tonight, we don't have the 1.6 million to fund it, right, and and we don't have any correct. partners coming to the table. That's if now, we pursue the shorter, as was originally planned, then we have the 75 percent from F dot. Yes, yes, okay. yes, we do. Now, if if they go out to bid, for example, and it, it actually comes in at 1.3 million dollars, and you decided you want to go back to the original design, you have to go back and redesign because that design. Okay. Tough decision. But I guess the question that I would ask Kyle, uh, because we wanted to go back to see if the funding is available for, say, the next fiscal year with DOT, are they willing to participate or not? I know they don't have the funding today, yeah. but what happens if they have it like the next year or the year after? They're already programmed through 2024. So uh, unless a project comes under budget, or is not simply pursued, we could use those funds. But at this point in time, they don't have any additional funds within their budget. For that's the uh, ABZD funds, I believe it's called. Hmm. I, I mean, I guess my, my concern is we're, we're heading down a path that I don't know that we can, we can fully resolve. I mean, I, I don't where we're going to come but we're still looking for money for washington street i mean i know that's important too we got a lot of other stuff and i, I just I, I know that the desire was there to, to to lengthen the the span but i'm mayor if time if time permits us i would rather to pull this item and i just want to do some more investigation on it is that is that possible uh time wise we're really uh crunch cutting, oh yes it, we should be 60 percent design right now if, if we approve this, um, we're going to do direct communication between myself and the consultant DOT to eliminate some of the, uh, you know, passive of, of, uh, inquiry and communication between us and the state. So we're trying to get everything approved. Um, so you've got to go through, uh, like, the cultural resource assessment evaluations. There's a lot of work that has to be done to get this 100% design approved by next January. Then it has to go out to bid and has to be ready to be let by July of 2022. So uh, every step, um, you know, within their schedule is accounted for. And just getting the TIF, the yeah. TIF agreements through the state is a six to nine month process. Yeah. So uh, to be clear tonight, we basically have two options. We can approve this, which will design us a longer bridge, which we will then be seeking funding for. Uh, or if we deny this, I presume we would go on with the original plan, which was the shorter, we'd kept, pick back up that process where we left it off, basically. Yes. Which would be the shorter span. And essentially, though, we'd be moving on beyond our chance to do the longer span. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I may, I just want to reiterate if we if we extend that span, we do increase the exchange and the flow and the rate, um, which will further improve the water quality of our hurting Indian River. Okay. 
I haven't heard any comments over here. Any Mr. Chancellor, we'll just, we can make a motion. Something I would like. It, you kind of have the same scenario as Magnolia. You had a group of citizens show up to a meeting and say, the, we, we want the longer bridge. That's what it originally was. They can go back to photos and document that. Um, there's some cons some thought that it's going to improve the water quality. Um, you know, the governor's produced a budget that has increased money for environmental issues, so there may be funding out there in the next year. Um, we don't know. We don't know if it's going to help the water or not unless we have the study done. <coughs> so. Well, yeah. But this is, the, I mean, the problem is this, this is the study to, find, to do that. And I, I hear you, and I guess what, and maybe, I, maybe I missed something along the way that I shouldn't have missed, but, yeah, I remember the meeting well. A lot of, a lot of citizens came, and that was the desire, and I, I thought what we were going to do is be able to basically analyze, like, you know, hey, yeah, if we can get funding for that, and if the FDOT is a partner, but if it leaves us on the hook with $1.6 I just, I mean, we just went through the budget process. I don't remember. John, you got $1.6 million you're going to lay around over there? <laughs> so... Uh, all right. Gentlemen, do I have a motion on this item? Item C on the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? M motion in the affirmative, and then we'll vote accordingly, of course. Move to support this item. Second. As worded. Okay, so I have a motion to approve item C as worded, and I have a second. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi? No. Mayor Owen? Uh, I'm a no. Thank you. All right, item C is approved. 7A, that approves the consent agenda. Moving on, item 7A, Michelle. Hello again, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, again, I'm back. Um, I hope you enjoyed hearing what Ms. Constance has been up to uh, for the last two to three years. Again, we're here as for new business um, to request approval to procure direct via piggyback contract the rock and glider um, ADA compliant component to put inside Riverside Park. Um, again, included in your agenda packet was a site plan of the existing park to the east of that area inside the park, there is a holdout space. It's a green space. We always left it that way for future um, expansion of that park. That park is lacking in some ADA um, components. Um, again, um, as an individual, I was touched by this, this initiative. Um, and as a staff member, it opened my eyes to that park a little bit more. Um, so I'm here tonight, again, supporting the effort and requesting uh, approval to put it in that park, and then the purchase and installation delivering freights twenty eight thousand five twenty four. Miss Constance does have four thousand to donate to the city, as well as any additional charity um, that she does make in December. We currently have one hundred and forty two thousand available in recreation impact fees operating reserves that would support the purchase. I've been told if we get the purchase order issued, it's a three week turnaround and this piece could be installed in our park, hopefully before the end of the year. Okay. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Any questions of Michelle? Or do I have a motion on this item? Well, I mean, the only comment is I've, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't reach out to our previous vendor that did 27th Street and to see what if there was a cost difference, if there was, could have been a cost savings or something along those lines. They, this component is not in their catalog. We cross-checked that. Okay. I, I definitely did that just okay. because we just finished with them. This is a much larger version of the smaller. So 27th has a rocking feature. Like right. I think three kids or four kids can sit in that. This is almost two times the size of that. Okay. So Thank you. No, no problem. It does come with a 15-year warranty. Okay. No, that was a question. No. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, we just... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought we just spent a lot of money on making Rocco Park um, an ADA playground. Rocco Park was in, built and installed when I started four or five years ago. Um, it was an entire playground assembly with a ramp that ramps you up, yes, to a slide. Um, it doesn't have the pour in place surfacing or the turf. It has mulch. The beauty about this piece of equipment in Riverside Park is the ramp would tie in directly to an exi the existing sidewalk that has the handrails and the pickets and where it opens up in the middle. So accessibility would be via concrete 
direct to a ramp. If this piece goes out to Rocco Park, um, it's kind of more of a peripheral issue with the mulch and having to pour a new sidewalk. We, we have no concrete work to do here. It would tie in directly to an existing pad. Okay, I see the benefit and I certainly agree with it. Okay. The concern is, is that we made a concerted effort at that time, and I know that didn't include you, to make Rocco Park something we didn't have in the community for right. special needs. Right. And it costs a lot of money, and now we're duplicating, duplicating to the extent that um, we're making it ADA accessible or compliant, not compliant, accessible in this case. Right. <clears throat> our, what, is our intent to do that to all the parks, or... In I believe words. that's a a good goal to have for as a you know personally as a staff member. You know, we just did twenty seventh coming off of that. That's an all inclusive um, playground as well. So sprinkling these features throughout the park throughout the parks I think is something we you know we would all be proud of. Okay. So that kind of policy decision needs to be done at budget time. Sure. I'm gonna support this tonight, but I'm not impressed that we have these kinds of requests come up, and this has nothing to do with you, per se. I'm just, I would like to see us deal with this in the budget, because what we did with Rocco Park was to specifically, um, you know, deal with this issue of making a park that was uh, compliant and would able to help kids with special needs. Mm -hmm. And it's big enough to be able to expand, but I don't know if we can afford to duplicate at every park, everything we do, um, that would be great if we do. But if we're if that's the policy we're going to take, then I think that that is certainly something that the commission should address during budget time. Um, we, so anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I think this is you know, uh, it's a great playground, Manatee Park, Riverside Park, whatever you call it. It is the most used playground. Um, I don't disagree with it being out there. I just think from a policy decision, we need to figure out what we're doing. Thank you. Okay. So a, Mr. Mayor. Just sure. I would like to make a motion, but a quick comment. Um, at first, uh, you know, I always gulp when I consider having to spend the taxpayer's money. But for children, I would spare no expense, especially in this circumstance. Um, and I will support it. Um, I would just like to make a little side motion if my colleagues would indulge me and if the family would. Um, great vessels have great names. And if we could name this ship the Miss Zoe A, if the family would allow, I, I would be honored to see that happen. And, and I think it would be a great honor for our city to have one of the first. Uh, we'd be a great example for the county. So if the family would allow... If you guys would allow, I'll make a motion to support this item. I have a motion to have a second. Second. And that is to include, the motion includes putting, naming the uh, the playgrounds at the ship after Zoe, right? Yes, and I amend, may amend that if the family has an objection. Yeah, or whatever works best with them. Yeah. The staff yeah. can work with the family, whatever you'd like That's to have on that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Mr. Clody, uh, discussion? Just, just one comment. Uh, I understand the background. I find this a very good thing to do, um, especially being the park could really use it, which is even better. But I think we should really set a policy when we accept donations for improvements to the town as to how much of a contribution we would like it to be. Uh, obviously, these people have moved forward with no such thoughts in their mind, so you certainly can't hold that against them. So uh, uh, basically, that's it. But I do support. Okay. We had a motion. We had a second. City Clerk for color roll, please. Commissioner Sachs? Aye. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Mayor Owen? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, next item up, item B. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, we're bringing the next item up. We have the property owner at 400 North Riverside Drive in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, has requested permission through an easement agreement to install a boathouse, an access pier, and a floating dock system. The entire proposed dock system will extend extend a total of approximately 36 feet into the Berry Canal on the property east of the applicant's property at 400 North Riverside Drive. The such a property is located between Mary Avenue to the north and Murray Street to the south. Construction of the residential dock facility of this location requires a dock easement agreement between the applicant and the city. Section 803.04 of the city's land development regulations has specific regulations pertaining to docks and single family residential zoning districts and the proposed plan in Exhibit C in your packet appears to meet all those LDR requirements. The applicant's dock wall will require both the Department of Environmental Protection, the U.S. Army Corps engineer for permitting or exemption. The applicant will also have to be required to get approval from the Volusia County Manatee Protection Plan Department. While these documents are not required for the City Commission to approve the attached easement agreement, they are required for a building permit to be issued for construction. Additionally, the property owner will be required to pay in the required manatee mitigation fee to Volusia County. The fee is $250 per single family dock and per the Volusia County boat dock seating plan, the property is entitled to a maximum of two boat slips. So with that, staff recommends approval of the dock easement agreement with the following conditions. One, the proposed covered boat house, access pier, and a floating dock meets all the requirements of the city's land development regulation and the Florida Building Code. And a, number two, a building permit is obtained. Number three, all required fees are paid to Volusia County. Four, all required permits or exemptions from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The Army Corps Engineers is obtained and any significant change in the attached plan would come back to receive city commission approval. That is uh, a condensed version of my staff report subject to any questions the commissioners may have. Any questions, staff on this item? By, uh, sorry, Commissioner Armin. Uh, later in the evening, we're gonna address uh, 8F. Yes, sir. Does this doc meet those standards? It does. Thank you. Any other questions on this item? I, I just had one ask it on every dock application. This this seems to be in correspondence with the other. It's not sticking out way further than all the other docks in that area. It's in line with everything else in that same Correct. vicinity, it, it's right? It's in about 35, 36 feet, which is in line with most of the other docks that are along that shoreline. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Any other discussion? If not, City Clerk, if you would call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Clody? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Doc easement has been approved. That's all of seven. All right. Next item up application for sidewalk cafe for the general public house. We'll now conduct a quasi judicial hearing. Uh, first, up, any ex parte communication on this item? We'll begin with the Vice Mayor Colodi. Anything to disclose? No. Okay. Commissioner Sachs? No either. Uh, I also have had none on this item. I met the owner, but I don't think we've talked about this. Commissioner McGurk? No. Other than uh, driving by, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Always driving by. All right. Uh, Mr. Mathen, if you would please be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thanks. You'd state your full legal name, your educational and professional background, please. My name is Robert George Bathan, Jr. I have over 18 years of experience in permitting, zoning, and planning. Eleven of those years was served as a permit tech or a zoning tech, and the last seven years as a planner. I'm currently the senior planner for the city of New Smyrna Beach. And... Um, if you want to know my educational background, I did receive my secondary education from the School of Hard Knocks. <laughs> so, remember the audience commission wished to question Mr. Mathen on his professional qualifications. If not, are there objections to qualifying him as an expert witness in the area of planning and zoning matters? Hearing no objections, he's determined to be an expert and qualified to give opinion testimony. Are you familiar with this application, Mr. Mathen? Yes, I am. Please state whether it's consistent with the city's comprehensive plan and your recommendation on this application. It is consistent with the city's comprehensive plan, and staff has recommended approval of the request to add the sidewalk cafe of four tables, 14 outdoor seats, and we have four conditions that are attached to the staff report. Okay. So any member of the commission wish to question Mr. Mathen on this application for this testimony? Hearing no questions, we'll now hear from the applicant if they would like to speak. Don't have to. 
All right. Uh, any members of the public wish to testify on this item, either for or against? Seeing none. Any closing remarks from the city? Assuming no. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion on this item? Public hearing is closed. Move to approve. Second. I Discussion? Do have, sure. I go do ahead. Have a comment. Uh, I would just uh, like to make sure, as we did on the previous application for sidewalks, that they have a condition that the menu board be placed within the seating area and not within the five feet adjacent to curb. Staff doesn't have an issue with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, we had a motion and a second on the table, so that wouldn't have been in that motion. So the mo uh, did you make that motion, Vice or Commissioner Hartman? Would you accept that amendment or uh, like to just uh, Sorry, to be clear, the sidewalk license has a provision that they have to have that minimum width of five feet of, and it has to be maintained for use by the general public. So they cannot put their sandwich board right, sign there. So it's in there so. already. Okay, good. Thank you for that clarification. All right. If no other discussion, City Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Commissioner Hartman. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Vice Mayor Cody. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Thank you. Sidewalk Cafe Agreement has been approved. Item B, quasi-judicial on a historic tree removal. Uh, again, ex parte communications, Vice Mayor, anything on this item? I've driven by it. Nope, you're not the Vice Mayor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting too, trust me. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner, Vice Mayor Colody. No. The, the new Vice Mayor. Commissioner Sachs. No. McGurk. All right, now, now it's your turn. Yes, I've driven by it and looked at the tree. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have none to disclose. Uh, all right, Mr. Fields, if you would please be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Give your legal name, educational, professional background. Ryan Scott Fields, education bachelor's of science in civil engineering from the University of Maryland, master's in business administration from the U University of Florida. My position is the director of development services and coastal environmental resiliency. I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Florida. I have 24 years of experience in land development, engineering, planning, permitting, and public administration. Any objections to qualifying Mr. Fields as an expert witness in the area of land development? If not, He's determined to be an expert and qualified to give opinion testimony concerning land development matters. Mr. Fields, are you familiar with this application and we state whether it's consistent with the city's comprehensive plan and your recommendation? Yes, I'm familiar with the application. Um, staff is, it's a request for removal of an historic tree. Um, staff is recommending approval. I have a brief overview of that. Um, the request is a to remove one historic live oak 42-inch tree within an undeveloped lot at 2201 Juanita Drive due to its size and location relative to the proposed construction of a new single-family home. This is a relatively small lot. It's undeveloped, um, and the applicant is seeking to build a new single-family home. The property is in the county zoned R4. Um, the subject property... Um, the tree is within what would be the driveway footprint of the proposed home. However, that tree would still be in close proximity to the southern end of the home. The applicant submitted a letter requesting approval to remove the tree, with reason being due, due to the change in soil grade, we are unable to conserve this tree while building the residence. Um, there is an arborist report that's included in your agenda packet. One of the it items from that states that it Quote, if the site plan could be changed to accommodate this tree, it would have a high likelihood of failure due to the extensive change in soil grade that would suffocate the existing root mat. Staff has reviewed this. Um, this is a unique item. Obviously, usually there's, there's an existing structure that's being threatened. That's not the case here. So what, what we looked at in this is, is it feasible that a different home could be constructed on this lot reasonably and preserve the tree and the tree would would maintain a good health and we looked at a few things the house the, the ground is low so most of the site would have to be filled in by several feet to bring the house pad elevation up so that's one factor that even if the home were reconfigured or even moved to a two-story that the, the the root base from this tree would very likely be underneath the foundation of the new home, and that would be very difficult. Long term, that could be a problem. Third, again, it's a lot is small, and their ability to move the home around is very limited in order to meet the other requirements. Lastly, and this is not in our criteria, but um, 
there's a state statute out there that um, if a tree after a home is built is determined to present a danger to persons or property, it could be removed without a permit, without approval of this board. So let's say they reconfigured the home, built it, and then after the fact they could determine that it is a threat because it would be towering over this home in close, close proximity to it. They would then likely have it removed and then nobody would be happy. They wouldn't be happy with the home they had to reconfigure and the tree would be gone. So it's a difficult position to be in, but based on those factors, we feel like it meets the criteria of really being no other reasonable, feasible option other than removing this tree. So therefore, staff recommends approval. With one condition, that if they're unable to meet the tree replacement on site, that the any trees that go in would be a minimum of four inch caliper instead of the minimum two and a half inch that's currently required. Okay. Any member of the commission wish to question Mr. Fields on his testimony? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Sachs. Uh, regrettably, I did not get to visit the site. Do you recall, are, are, have you seen any more historic trees on the site? No, there's just this one. Are there a, a good number of trees on the site? It's heavily treed site, yes. There's, I think there's a couple of pictures in your agenda yes, packet that can kind of show it. It's, they were, it's, thank you. Aerial. Yes, I, I viewed a paper copy, which was not good. I, yeah. Thank it's you for sharing. Page 277 in the agenda packet. I, I see yours, thank you, Mayor. And that's a low-lying piece of property. You wouldn't call it wetland, would you? Haven't seen a wetland determination. Um, not sure if it qualifies as jurisdictional wetlands. Thank you, Brian. Any other questions of staff? I just have a comment. When I drove by, I noticed that the tree was fairly close to the power lines. So it's just a matter of time before somebody comes in there and starts whacking away at it anyway. And um, it certainly would take away from the character of the tree. So, so I'm sure at some point in the future, very near future, it would probably die. So I could support this. I had, oh, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, this is a tough one. You know, this is one of those, I looked at this, that was city manager, and I said, <laughs> it's just one of those things that there's no good solution to this. Um, and then we run into the problem of if we deny the ability to take the tree down, we're essentially denying the use of the property. And that opens up a whole other can of worms. So it's unfortunate, but I'm also going to have to be able to support this so the person can use the property for its zoned use. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Um, so I, I just had one, Brian, if you know off the top of your head. I noticed it looks like in one of the aerials uh, that the lot next to it, these are small lots, but it looks like the one next to it is open. Is the same owner on both, or is it just the one? I'm going to Stephanie to answer sure. that, please. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thanks. Um, so the lot to the west, yeah. um, it is developed, and the, pr the the developer did own this lot, um, okay. but sold it. Okay, so it's been the developed. Owner. I got gotcha. you. So, so they, no. okay, so the area on two seventy seven is be before they had developed. It's like two. They developed that one, and now they're trying to develop the other. Got it. Okay. It's a separate yeah. developer. Yeah. Okay. All right, that was it. I was just making sure. Oh, sorry, Stephanie, please. Uh, separate homes? Th these two lots are separate property? Yeah. Yes, um, and the survey that they submitted, which was in your staff report, um, makes it look like this is a larger lot than it is. Um, it's only 78 feet wide. It was subdivided and developed to the west, and now this parcel is proposed for development under review. Unfortunately, our aerials, I think, are dated, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just well, Google's behind. I think the other behind. house is fairly new. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No, no problem on that, by the way. It's to be expected. Let's have one more comment. Yes. I would encourage staff to uh, invite them to annex into the city in the very future. Okay. Um, 
We'll now hear from the applicant if they would like to speak on this item. You don't have to speak. You've heard the commissioner comments, but you're welcome to speak. You will have to be just sworn in, Carrie. Do you uh, yes, Mayor and Commissioner do you, Bob I, Bailey. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you. you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> Bob Bailey, Bailey Construction. I am under contract with Mr. Romblinger to build a home, and we have looked at ways of trying to preserve that tree, but it's, again, like they've said, that when the fill goes in there, it's eventually going to kill it. And we just ask for permission and to remove it from the property. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does any member of the commission wish to question the witness? Quickly, Mr. Bailey. Mr. You, Bailey, yeah. may, I, may I ask you a quick question? Yeah. You, you do a lot of building. Uh, have you ever seen properties that have where there's natural or protected vegetation like saw palmetto or live oak where they actually uh, make a depression for those plants? elevate the rest of the property but actually create a hollow yes i actually have in seminole county Does but it work? it's a much larger piece of ground sure. where we had the room to preserve yeah. wetlands yeah. cypress but this is a very Not small that. lot and there's no real room to move the home around let alone you know, get it on the lot and meet setbacks and get a septic system on there also. Thanks. Appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any members of the public wish to testify on this item? Any members of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Any closing comments by staff? No, again, just would recommend if the motion that if tree replanting is required, it be the four inch caliper. Okay, do I have a motion on this item considering also the comments just made by, by staff? Motion to approve with staff recommendations. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right, so to be clear, it's a motion to approve the removal with the additional stipulation that the replacement trees, if not able to be done on the property, are, or, or even on the property? If, if the replacement on. on the property, that they be with four-inch caliper Okay, if replaced on the property with four-inch caliper trees. Okay. Uh, City Clerk, if you'd call the roll on that motion, please. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Floody? No. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for asking permission. Doing it the right way. We appreciate it. All right, item C, ordinance uh, on Ben Breakfast. City Commission will conduct a public hearing on this item. City Attorney will read the ordinance by title only first. Ordinance number 7719, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach amending the land development regulations, amending Article 2, Definition, Section 201, General Definitions, to revise bed and breakfast homes and to add container or shipping container building and shed structure. Amending Article 5, Zoning District, Section 50402, specific regulations by district to change the permitted use of bed and breakfast homes to a conditional use in the BBH Zoning District, bed and breakfast home overlay district. Providing for codification, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. All You're right. still under oath. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, the Planning Department reviewed the Land Development Regulations Section 5 for Bed and Breakfast Homes District uh, as directed by the City Commission to determine if the regulation need to be clarified and or expanded. Also, staff reviewed the general definition for a bed and breakfast home. So staff also added definitions for shed, and container structure under section 201 uh, for the recommendation of the building department to assist while doing plan and permit review. Staff reviewed the current regulations for the bed and breakfast home district and found that the current regulations were too broad and that the original intent of the regulations were to allow for additional use for a single family home. A bed and breakfast home should be located close to the ocean or the Indian River or its tributaries. Also bed and breakfast homes would also be located in one of the two city's national registered historic districts. Staff also reviewed the current definition of the bed and breakfast home and updated that definition to match the proposed bed and breakfast home district regulation. Additionally, staff added two additional definitions not previously found in the land development regulations. 
staff recommends that the city commission to approve these changes to the land development regulations, updating the bed and breakfast home district and adding definitions for a shed and a container structure. And that is a condensed version of my staff report, so up to any questions the commissioners may have. And there was one recommended change we discussed um, under bed and breakfast home definition that it would be at least one fresh meal prepared on site per day. So we, we as uh, comm Commissioner Hartman pointed out, it wasn't quite tight enough, so we think that language will tighten it up. Okay. Uh, so this is a public hearing. We'll open it to members of the public who would like to speak on this item at this time. Any members of the public wish to speak about bed and breakfast? Seeing none, we will close public hearing. We have a motion to adopt ordinance 77-19 on first reading. By the way, this is a first reading. We'll have the same item come back to us as a second reading, but because of the nature of it, we had to do it as a public hearing, even though it's a first reading. So this isn't the end-all, be-all on this one. Do I have a motion to adopt with the amended changes? So move. Second. Uh, Commissioner Hartman, I think I heard you wanting to I speak. I have some issues about this. Do you want okay. to talk about after we vote, or...? Uh, I'd say go ahead now. It, yeah, you can... We're listening. Okay. Um, where I support the bed and breakfast, I don't necessarily support the container language or the shed language. There's some, um, you talk about height on a shed. It, it, if you get, is it natural ground? We're talking about if somebody who has a piece of property that's low and he wants to build a shed up above the flood plan. Now, are you talking virgin ground? Or are you talking floor height? Um, we don't address um, pitches on the roof. Um, some covenants may say, you know, your outbuilding has to match your, your structure. You know, I'm required to have a 610 pitch. So my shed may be taller than allowed, but it's due to other reasons, not necessarily the, the shed height. So I have issues with the shed language and the container language. Um, you know, it, out west and in other parts of the country, uh, they're using these shipping containers as office sites. Also, the, uh, it's a seems to be a, um, very favorable towards low-income housing. Um, you know, when you, if you go overseas, you'll see a lot of these things. I saw four stories of these things at a university that was all um, student housing, where they configured these containers in such a way that they had a glass atrium where they could all uh, intermingle and have a common space. So I think there are options out there that we want to look at. If we put this language in here now, we've kind of tied our hands, and then we'll have to come back and address it. So I, I don't know if you want to address it now or maybe have a workshop on it later or do something like that. But I certainly can support the bed and breakfast part is if you agree to my language. So let's, let's get this... Let's run down the commission line real quick and see if there's any other comments on this on this item. Any any other comments on what Commissioner Hartman just shared? Yes. Those items specifically, Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Hartman brings up a good point about the use of sheds. I, I would not support them in a residential neighborhood uh, at this time. At this time, um, I I did see a shed that was built. I don't know if it was according to zoning. Uh, it was not a container, but it was a shed, and it was way taller than the home. And it turned out that they just had to um, supply a walkway, covered walkway, and that qualified it as, if I'm correct, as part of that property. So I have a concern about sheds, although I don't, I'm not opposed to sheds, but not sheds that are 30 feet tall. And then the use of containers, uh, this, this could be a viable solution to homelessness, to inexpensive homes, but we'd have to discuss where we would like them zoned. So I, I do appreciate the commissioner's comments. Maybe we could table that I, part portion of the item if you're willing to uh, okay. let's, let's research. Get other, let's get other commissioner comments real quick and then we'll come back to staff. Any other, any other comments on this item? Vice Mayor. Uh, the uh, bed and breakfast is the part that's really important, and I appreciate the staff trying to keep down the number of changes we make to our ordinances, but based on the comments I've heard, I'll amend my motion. 
only to continue with the uh, bed and breakfast part. Okay. Who seconded that motion? I don't Nobody remember. did. Nobody. Well, before we uh, amend the uh, motion, I think there could be some staff clarification that clears this up. So currently, and you all can fill this in, they're not permitted as permanent structures as it is. So right now, this is just a definition. So even if we were going to allow these as you know, temporary housing or whatever, we would have to come back through and do code amendments. So regardless of adopting this definition tonight, to further that idea, we would have code amendments. So if they're not permitted now, why are we putting language in that says that? And planning can address that. <laughs> do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thanks. Amy King, planning director. I just would like to say that we can continue the definition section here regarding sheds and containers and just move forward with the bed and breakfast language if the commission so desires, Mayor. And therefore, we can clarify both sheds and containers and clarify some of the questions that have come up this evening. The only problem is my ordinance title has them all together. So I can, um, we can withdraw this, enter a new one on the 10th, have first reading on the 10th, simply on bed and breakfast, and then we would have adoption the first meeting in January. So that's a, uh, the one way to address it, and then they can come back later and deal with the other issues. So let me just let me clarify a couple of things. First of all, my, my comments are, um, I agree. I, I think anything that's putting us regressive rather than progressive on the whole uh, alternative housing, tiny home movement, all of those things are things that I will, in the right places and done the right way, um, I, I would love to see us more leaning into rather than pulling away from in New Smyrna Beach. Again, done the right way and in the right place. Um, not necessarily, you know, anyway. So that that's a broader discussion for us to probably have. But what I think I'm hearing from staff is, just for, for simplicity's sake and to avoid a bunch of duplicative work, that really though that length that we're defining what a container or shipping container or a shed structure is more we're not necessarily changing what can or can't be done with them in this document we're just making sure we have if somebody asks us what a shed is before it wasn't in our language now it is and if somebody asks what a shipping container home or container building was we've now defined it so it doesn't stop us from continuing that conversation about rules and regs around those so if the commission would be in agreement, I, I, it feels like the best way to proceed for ease may be we move this through changing the definitions, keep the title and everything as it is, and then we bring back, you've heard the concerns from, from the commission to talk more maybe about some of those other items. How yes, Mayor, and actually we, the planning staff was asked specifically by the building staff, the building department staff, to define shed and container because it just simply wasn't defined before. Yeah. Okay. Is that clear? Does that give anybody concern? Um, so could, Mr. Mayor, sure. sorry, no. could we restate the motion or, or clarify yeah, the yeah, motion? We'll, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> okay, motion maker. Yes, uh, my third try. <laughs> I make a motion that we move on to the uh, to the second hearing as it's written, and that the definitions stay in. I do not want to delay the bed and breakfast part. It's very important. Okay. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. See the clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Vice Mayor Clody. Yes. Commissioner Hartman. No. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Uh, Carrie, I did open the public hearing on that, right? 99% sure I did. Yes. Yeah, okay. So quick question. This doesn't yes. preclude the fact that we'll never be able to visit containers as alternate housing? No, I think what we, what I was just about to, to come clear. back to is to say, you know, staff filed it away for some future <laughs> workshop like what we just went through. Yes, we'll bring those issues back and clarify them right now again. Just definitions, if so we yep. can... Yeah, Extract yeah. And separate leave. issue. This continues through. This is just definitions, and then eventually I think we – I think it's just something we need to be out ahead of because it's it's a matter of time before somebody comes in and wants to put a tiny home or a shipping container home somewhere. Uh, I mean, it's the trend right now. So I'd love to see us be proactive on it. Mr. Mayor, just one yes, I have a question. Mayor. Are sheds 
whether they're defined or not allowed now in residential zones? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think I think the just to clarify some confusion is we have sheds and accessory structures. The large structure that Commissioner Sachs was referring to, if it exceeds this very small size that we've defined here, right. it falls under a different classification, different set of rules. That's we're just asking for that clarification in our definitions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Item D. Second reading of an ordinance would vacate one block of Luella Street. City Attorney, read the ordinance, but title only. Ordinance number 7319, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach vacating a portion of Luella Street located between May Avenue and Myra Avenue, providing for conflicting ordinances and providing an effective date. Okay, we talked about this quite a bit at our last meeting. Do you have any new things to add? Just wanted to confirm that um, as with the right-of-way vacated, the lot does conform to the R2 regulations in terms of width, depth, overall size. It's an unusually shaped lot to begin with, and so we looked at it, but it does conform. Okay. Uh, this is a public hearing. Any members of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance number 73-19? So moved. Second. Any discussion by the commission? Hearing none. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? No. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 73-19 is adopted. Ordinance 7519. Budget amendments. City Attorney, read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance 7519, an ordinance amending budget ordinance numbers 5218, 5418, 5718, 119, 819, 1119, 1619, 4519, and 6219. Current expenses and capital outlay required for fiscal year 2018 2019. Providing for re reversion of unencumbered funds, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. All right. Staff report. Uh, yes, good evening, Mayor and Commission. Uh, this evening I'm presenting the fiscal year 2018-19 year-end budget amendments, and I would like to summarize the details that went along with the Exhibit A. The staff-recommended year-end budget amendment includes a citywide reduction of $8,365,922, bringing our total fiscal year 2018-19 budget to $77,507,042. To highlight a few areas, the general fund saw zero net change, but there are numerous transfers that as a result of costs associated with Hurricane Michael and Dorian that were offset by increased revenues, specifically within our ad valorem taxes, state revenues, and fire transport services. For our stormwater trust funds, airport CRA, impact fee funds, Turnbull Capital Project Fund, and Capital Projects Fund, these reductions were due to projects not being completed within the current fiscal year and the budget carry forward to fiscal year 2019-2020. For the building and inspection fund, parking revenue fund, and our fleet maintenance fund, our permit fees, usage fees, and fleet charges exceeded projections and those monies have been set aside for future years as required. Again, these adjustments are estimates based on where we currently are with the year-end budget, I'm sorry, audit process, and will be incorporated as part of our comprehensive annual financial report when issued. If there are any questions, I can answer them, but we have, there are five pages of adjustments. Okay. Any questions for staff by the commission on this item? I want to know where the pennies are. Chief said there were pennies involved. <laughs> Sir, I was confused on that one because <laughs> Shane and Chris come to my office nonstop, and I don't think I've ever said no to them. <laughs> but then again, they're tag teams, so. And they got guns. And they, they carry, carry weapons. Well, that so. doesn't bother me. Have you ever been tased, John? Is that <laughs> blink twice if, the, if you're under duress? I have no desire to do it with everyone filming it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so I did just have one. Uh, I had a lot of questions, but just one for now. Um, there will be, a on many of these items, there will be a corresponding adjustment, I'm assuming, that will be needed in the budget we just passed because we're rolling a lot of stuff forward. Or have we already incorporated that into this yes, year's sir. budget? From the first public hearing to the second public hearing, if you'll remember, I carried forward $10 million yeah. in projects. Okay. That 
the, care of it the other side of these. Year. This okay. is just closing it out in the last year's to roll forward. Okay. All right. And then the, the other comment would be, um, and we talked about this a little bit during the budget process, but if you remember, we, for the commission, we, we estimate revenues at, what was it, 95%, I think, yes, collection rate. And we have historically trended at 90, at, at a few basis points above that, as many as 100, yeah, 100, 150 basis points above that, which is on a scale of $50 million, that becomes real money. Um, so I'd like to, as we go through this process, as that, as that materializes, um, I'd like for us to just kind of know that. And I know, I mean, staff's managing it on a daily basis. And in this case, you responded to things like the hurricanes and all those kind of things. But to me, that's some, some money that is, is unplanned and unbudgeted. So we have many unplanned and unbudgeted things that pop up. Um, so having some, some line of sight on that as it happens. So if you can just keep us in the loop on, hey, our collection rate is trending higher or definitely lower, uh, which I don't, I hope not, but keep us posted on that so we can track when that when that comes in and I do believe um, the monthly budget reports that we're putting in the we'll second um, that, yeah. commission meeting of every month I believe is highlighting um, the specific line items associated to revenues of the general fund excellent thank you all right do I have a motion on this item I'm sorry it's a public hearing any members of the public wish to speak on this item seeing none we'll close the public hearing so a motion to adopt ordinance 75-19 as presented so moved. Second. And a motion and a second by Commissioner Sachs. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank Ordinance 7519 is adopted. 78 19, second reading would amend pertaining to boats, docks, terminal platforms, et cetera, et cetera. City Attorney, read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance 7819, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach amending the land development regulations, amending Article 2, Definition, Section 208, boat slip allocations to add definitions for shared facility and standard facility. Amending Article 8, Supplementary Regulations, Section 80304, regulations pertaining to boats, boat docks, and boat docks with terminal platforms, covered boat slips, boat houses, mooring poles, and other boat storage and docking facilities. And Section 803045, boat slip allocations, to be consistent with the Volusia County Manatee Protection Plan, providing for codification, providing for conflicting ordinances, and providing an effective date. Okay, staff report. Yes, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, the Planning Department received, uh, reviewed the Land Development Regulation 803.04 and 803.045 for consistency with the Volusia County Manatee Protection Plan and found that the changes, that changes were required. Also, staff created a definition for a stand facility and a shared facility under Section 208.00. Staff reviewed the current regulation with the Volusia County Manatee Protection Program Manager as it pertained to docks, morning poles, slips, covered slips, and terminal platforms and slip allocations. Staff recognized that there were inconsistencies between the city's land development regulation and the Volusia County Manatee Protection Plan. In addition to the inconsistencies, staff was made aware that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers now requires a permit for single-family docks in the Indian River. The city adopted the Volusia County Manatee Protection Plan, and the plan was set in place to protect manatees and other wildlife in the waters of Volusia County. It also limits the amount of boat slips in rivers, creeks, canals around the Indian River, the Halifax River, the St. Johns River. The plan also sets guidelines to protect the springs that are located in Volusia County. Staff recommend that the City Commission approve these changes to the Land Development Regulation of Section 803.04, 803.045, and Section 208.00 to be consistent with the Volusia County Manatee Protection Plan. That's a condensed version of this staff report subject to questions that the commissioners may have. Thank you, Bob. Any questions of staff? Just Vice Mayor? Comment. Sorry, I'll come to you next. Go ahead. Just a quick comment. I see pool written, uh, and, and it is poll, Maureen, poll. Poll. Pole. Okay. If we could correct that typo, please. What line? Uh, it's it's like the, the third, it's like the third it's line. It's in the title. Uh, on, oh, not the ordinance? No, it's in, not, it's in the actual title. It may just be on our agenda as well. It may not actually be in the heading you have. I'll look. Uh, Vice Mayor, go ahead. I have uh, uh, two areas of concern. Why are we adding the, uh, the provision that man-made canals have to be subject to the same regulation? We require permitting for any docks that are in a man-made canal. Currently, they have to go through the Volusia County Amenity Protection Program. 
uh, they have to pay dock fees if they don't have a dock there currently, and their plan has to be approved with a number of slips to that plan. They're also required by the building department, if they cannot get a DEP permit, they have to get a DEP self-certification. And so that certification or permit is still in place today. We just did not have that in our regulation or LDR, even though it was a procedure in their department. Okay. Uh, I live in one of those man-made canals. I've never seen anybody get any type of approval except from our, our city regarding docks. And these people are very proprietary about what goes on in their yard. So I'm really surprised that this is coming up now. Yeah, I actually uh, spoke to the building department. They do require their self-certification for DEP for all dark permits, no matter if they're in man-made canals or not. Okay. Uh, I put one in. I never got asked. Of course, it was about 10 years ago. Um, well, that was under a different administration <laughs> and different zoning text. We had a different <laughs> vice mayor then. So. <laughs> okay, so the rules haven't changed. It's just how we applied them. That's correct. Okay. But we did not have them in our LDR, which is the, what the building departments asked for, so they can refer back to that to show that it's a requirement, not just a procedure. Okay, I picked that up because I had to read through this thing about four times because I find it confusing. The part I find most confusing is when you go into the shared dock mm -hmm. and the shared property owners type of thing. Um, it's going to make people believe two individual single family homes can have a shared dock. Yet the requirements still say they, all the improvements have to be 10 feet off a property line or whatever the setbacks are. Right. I do not know how people are going to resolve that because I know that's going to become an issue. And it clearly states that in subdivided areas where the single family home sets, that's where these rules apply. So I do not know how that's going to be handled. Okay. Well, currently shared facilities are allowed in the city, so we did not add that to this particular ordinance. It's already in place. So currently you can have a shared facility or you could have a standard facility. The problem is there was no definitions for what those facilities are. So we've added definitions for that. So share facilities, um, where that would be used most would be actually in your neighborhood. I where know. Where people live in the canals, and so they live in the corners of those canals where one house may have a 20 foot of water frontage, can't get a dock because you got 10 foot setbacks. The next door neighbor's got 60 or 70 foot, he has plenty of room for a dock. So if you got these two property owners together, they can come to an agreement of having a shared facility then what happens is both property owners could have a dock. The manatee protection will allow each one of them to have two slips, so you'd have a four-slip structure, but between two property owners. Now, if that structure can be divided right down the center of the property line, they'll be fine. If not, then they're going to have to have some type of shared easement agreement where they can have access and cross over someone else's property line to access a dock. That would be something that would be handled through permitting. And I've talked to the building official, and he understands that they'd be looking for that type of easement agreement privately with their permit application. But how does that uh, comport or go with the fact that structures have to be such a distance off of a property line? Right. Well, you do have repairing lines. We do have setbacks for 10 feet. With a shared facility, it would be no interior setback for 10 feet. It doesn't say that in this proposed ordinance. So that, that 10 foot provision is for standard structures, which is your standard facility. Standard so if, for it, if it intended to apply to a shared facility, it would have said no standard or shared facility, right? Correct. Okay. okay. So with a shared facility, we're not looking to have an interior setback from the interior repair in line, only on if it's a, a, a single or a standard facility, which they currently can do now. It's just that we had no definition for that. Okay. Uh, I still find it confusing. I accept your explanation, and I find that that, that handles it uh, technically. It's just living in a neighborhood such as this, at which half the people happen to be engineers or lawyers, <laughs> they never agree on anything. So I just find this a little confusing, that's all. Well, this would give them the opportunity to come into an agreement. They will be coming in to visit you a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, did I open this for a public hearing? I lost track. Yes. I did. I think, yes. All right. So, any other comments by the commission on this one? M my one question was, because uh, I'm 
not as sharp as vice mayor and so I, I read it a few times as well on it it was a little confusing to me also but we heard earlier and I've heard a lot in the community about these you know bajillion boat slips that are supposedly coming or going to be asked for something related to river walk so does this in any way impact that based on everything we know today does it make it more accessible less accessible does it have any impact on that proposal or it wouldn't have whatever. any impact on their their project because they have already been approved by the city commission at that time they made application for their slips okay right now they're under a plan review for their slips and so we uh, but there won't be this would not would not change their particular plan so those docs just were approved by by a commission and so we're now looking at their site plan they were released from our slip pool okay that was my only question all right remind me gentlemen i'm sorry i've got so sucked into vice mayor do we get a motion in a second on this or not no. does anybody remember okay all right do i have a motion on this item so move it was second i'll second it all right <laughs> any other discussion if not city clerk if you call the roll please Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right. Ordinance 7819 is adopted. 79-19, second reading would approve entering into a solar power contract with the Utilities Commission City Attorney will read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance 7919, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach authorizing the Utilities Commission City of New Smyrna Beach, Florida to execute and enter into a contract for a term exceeding four years. Providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Before we dive in on this item, speaking of the Utilities Commission, anybody remember the star on top of the Utilities Commission building? Yes. Has it been there for a little while? No. It is going to be back this year, thanks to some local citizens and the great folks over at the Utilities Commission. They have rallied the troops and figured out a way, and that's going to be back on the Utilities Commission this year. That's awesome. So, very they excited. The power. They, they, they got the power, that's right. So now, <laughs> now the star will be back, so thank you all for the, for the hard work on that item. Uh, all right, there's a staff report on this item. Any, uh, to cover? Tim Byerly with the Utilities Commission. Uh, good evening, um, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, Colin put together the staff report here, and um, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Okay. Basically, um, we'd be um, purchasing a 10 megawatt portion of the FMPA Phase Two solar program. They have a very favorable price on the energy. It's lower than what our current all-in cost is right now for our other energy. It would supply about 5% of our of our energy needs for the year, and would allow us somewhere down the line to offer solar subscriptions to the city, such as uh, similar to what Kissimmee and KUA is doing. They have a similar program, and we could also offer subscriptions to our customers, our residential or commercial customers, so they could purchase any percentage of their energy needs in the future. Uh, the plan is that the plant will go online around the end of 2023 and we would be entering into a 20-year contract with FMPA to purchase the 10 megawatts of solar. Okay. And for clarity, and he just touched on it, but the, the ordinance says for a term exceeding four years, that's what triggers it to come to us. Anything under that can be approved by the UC. It's here because it exceeds four years. Specifically, that is a 20-year agreement that we're actually agreeing to, which isn't in the agenda, but just so there's clarity. Any uh, so public hearing? Any members of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance 79-19? So moved. Second. Quick question. Question. Uh, am I correct or wrong? I thought it was it was going to provide 10 percent. That well, 10 percent of our of our peak demand, but yes, about sir. 5 percent of our energy needs, because um, you only get so much sunshine during the day, <laughs> so it'll you know. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Any other any other questions? I'm excited about this one. This is great. I remember Joe came and spoke to us about this opportunity a little bit back, so I'm glad to see it coming through, and I, I look forward to being able to eventually say that we, as a city, are procuring the vast majority, if not 100% of our power via, via solar. So 
All right, we had a motion and a second. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Clody? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, ordinance 79 19 is adopted. Item H, second reading an ordinance would implement a pilot program along off site sandwich boards. City Attorney will read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 8019, conduct the second. Uh, <laughs> Never mind, I was reading the agenda. <laughs> An ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach amending the land development regulations. Amending Article 6, Development Design and Improvement Standards, Section 60412 Signs, to authorize a pilot program providing for off site sandwich board signs in the MU Mixed Use Zoning District under certain conditions. Providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Okay, staff report. A brief report. This memorializes the sandwich board pilot program that uh, the commission directed us to implement at the October 22nd meeting. Just the conditions of, those, of the sandwich boards are, you know, must be within 500 feet of the business's advertising. It may be located in adjacent non-residential zoning district. Um, it may be on a public sidewalk, provided it does not impair accessibility. And for as far as accessibility, that would include all aspects of it, location, width, clearance, cross slope, you know, being on a, on a ramp in front of an entrance, all that is covered under that accessibility term. Um, ha has to have written approval of the abutting property owner. Um, and staff, I think it was one suggestion, um, it's a really good one that we'll prepare a form for this pilot program that we can have them fill out so there's a standard for everybody. So if there's any doubt, we would have that on file. So we would have it, handle that through our planning office. Um, that helps us also get out and see and monitor this program to see if it's working or what problems we're having. Um, it may be located on private property, again, with approval of the property owner, and it must meet all other sandwich board requirements that are currently in our LDR. So this would expire on June 23rd, 2020. It gives us some time before that to evaluate and get any changes through planning and zoning board and back in front of the city commission. Um, the PNZ board supported it, recommended a 5-0 vote. The uh, staff <coughs> recommends approval. Okay. This is a public hearing. Any members of the public wish to speak on this item? Sure. This is your chance. Name and address, please. Uh, uh, Scott Steger, we'll use 120 Flagler Avenue. Um, a question on the property owner approval of sandwich board signs. Most of the businesses up and down Flagler and or Canal Street are not necessarily owned by the people who have the business. So does the person who owns the building have to give permission for the sandwich board to be out front, or does the person who operates the business there? For example, I operate a business there, and if I put a sandwich board sign out without my landlord's approval, uh, conceivably, the, the way I heard it, and maybe I'm totally wrong, I just want to make sure that there's some clarity there. Good question. Yeah, we went with property owner because if there were a citation, the code enforcement process is the property owner gets cited, so that's why we went with that. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I think you're going to put a fairly significant impediment to some of those folks up and down the street. I don't know that my um, – there's one person who owns a lot of the property up there. I lease from him. I'm not sure that he's the kind of guy who would say, oh, yeah, I'll just sign off on any of these things, put a sandwich board out in the front, even though it's really my business that might be – impacted like by the I don't know the gym that's around the corner for me I could care less whether they put a sandwich board out there it gets some business to them I'm not sure the landlord would necessarily feel the same just throwing it out there as a thing you might want to think about thanks that's something we nope. can evaluate in the pilot period would be my suggestion <laughs> Do, you, you don't have a proposed solution Scott you just bring us problems is that is that what you're he didn't hear me <laughs> Scott all right go ahead I mean, Commissioner Hartman. so the other thing Having gone to the um, code enforcement boards, a lot of times these owners they can't even get a hold of. You know, they do certified mail, they come back returned, so forth and so on. So that may be something that needs to be addressed as you move forward. Um, I don't know how, but, you know. Yeah, I would just think if the property owner is going to have some liability. Yes. There. No. Yes. With that provision to have it signed apply, if you're renting a property, would you have to go to your owner? Or is it only apply to when you want to put the, uh, the sign off-premises, around the corner or something like that? It would be the off-premises sign, whoever's frontage it is, the owner of that building would have to give permission saying, yes, you can place your sign in front of 
the building I own on the public sidewalk or on private property. Right, correct. Uh, to address the request, if you're renting and you're putting it out in front of the property you're renting on, you do not need a sign off. Okay, public hearing is still open. I think we got a few other folks that want to ask a question or speak on this item. Come ahead, sir. Give me your name and address, please. Mr. Mayor and Commission Howard Berkowitz Peppers Boutique over in 119 Faulkner Street. Um, the signs are key to our business. Um, a day doesn't go by that we're there, that people don't come in today as well as any other day. Uh, where they say the importance of th them coming down off of Canal Street, um, the, 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 I don't know how many feet it is, but uh, coming to our location um, because they saw the sign. Um, the other thing is I don't think there's ever been a concern with businesses off of Canal Street as there has been over the last six or nine months or over, over the last couple of years. Um, and I think it's key that we address this. Um, and I'd be more than happy to assist in any kind of permanent signs um, that the city or, or any of the planning members would, would be involved in. Okay. Thank you. Good, good feedback. And I've, I've heard that some more feedback throughout the community. So, yes, sir, you also wanted to speak on this item? Yes, Joe Dlubach, uh, 3587 Casalta Circle. Uh, I would hope that this applies only to property that's zoned industrial or commercial and not apply to residential areas. Thank you. Okay. It's, well, it, Brian, Two clarifications. Sure. Yeah, it's the mixed use zoning district. Um, is, yep. is where the business is, and then they can locate it in another mixed use. It, it can't be residential. Yes. Um, and, but to clarify on the property owner, it's the property owner, if it's in the public sidewalk, it's the property owner, it, it's the property owner either way, whether it's private property or on the public sidewalk. So that's an issue that we'll have to monitor. So a question on that, how would the, I get but the whole fine thing, but how, if, what would the where would the fine come in if so? Let's say I, I'm renting a, a space on Canal Street from you know some out of state landlord, and somebody comes up to me and says, "Hey, I want to put my can I put a sign here? I'm in the business around the corner." And I say, "Yeah, it's not a competing business. It's great for the city. Go for it." How does the property owner what liability? What would the where so would the fine come if in? It, if it were in compliance, you wouldn't have any issues. But let's say they were impeding the five foot sidewalk. But wouldn't that or go to the to that? other? Wouldn't that go to the person who put the sandwich board out? Not me who said yeah you can put it it's there their property so if somebody tripped and fell isn't it right away though technically or no? well it, I'm, we're kind of mixing two different terms yeah. but the you know generally when we're talking in residential the property owner is <coughs> responsible for maintenance of that right yeah. away so it's it's something we're going to have to figure out if it's an issue if it's not an issue in my opinion this was the best way to draft yeah. it but yeah, it we is were, i see it we were good until scott showed up no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Tony, do you have? Yeah, right. Yeah, Mayor, I had a suggestion that perhaps a letter that goes to the property owner could say, if you have an objection, respond. So that way, a lot of people don't respond to city things. If they have an objection, they'll res they're will they forced to mm -hmm. respond. If we don't hear from them, then it lets the store owner place the sign. Okay. I'm going to give Carrie a minute to think about that and see one other member of the public. Any other members of the public, queue up now, and I'm going to close public participation after this. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Rachel Allen. I'm 119 Faulkner Street. I'm actually the owner of the building that Pepper's Boutique is in. Good evening. Um, Good evening. So I just want a little clarification because it's confusing because you guys are talking about on the, on the sidewalks, but there's actually part of an easement, I understand it, to be on Canal Street where a lot of the sandwich board signs kind of go or... They line up in that area, so they're not really on the sidewalk, but they're on that grassy area. So is that what happens in that situation when the boards are in that area? Just kind of clarification on the ordinance. Okay. We may not have an answer for you, but yes. Yeah. Look, look at the smirk on Scott's face. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the right of way, yeah. it, it, this would apply. It's the right of way. It, you can't impede the sidewalk. So if it's on private property, that's a different classification than it's a sign. So... It wouldn't really, it, if that grass area, I'm not sure if the easement's the right term for that, we'd have to look at it, but if it's in the right of way, it applies. Okay. Carrie, I'd, uh, I like Tony's idea, but what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> not a fan of that, no, and okay. my, my thought process is let's leave it as is, let's see 
how this issue, it may not even be an issue. So before we. Okay. All right. Take the words right out of it. Let's do that. We may be getting ahead of ourselves unnecessarily. All right. We'll close the public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion to adopt ordinance 80-19? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? Yes. Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like the, uh, because it isn't included in it as it was printed, the requirement that the written notice be provided to the city. I'll amend my motion to approve with the inclusion of a written notice to the city that the property owner or that the it's going to be the person putting out the the company of business putting out the sign needs to notify the city i will second the amendment hang on let's make sure brian's got so that right the, the notice is that the owner of the off-site location giving permission for the sign to be on their property or their frontage gotcha let me restate that yeah. Make a motion to approve with the addition that the owner of the property approving the sign gives written permission to the city. Okay. Accept that. Second. Okay. We had a motion. We had a second. Vice Mayor, does that address your concerns? You yes, go? it does. All right. City Clerk, if you call the roll, please. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Ordinance 80 19 is adopted. First readings, 37-19, city attorney will read the ordinance by title only. Sorry, I caught you off guard. Ordinance 3719, an ordinance of the city of New Smyrna Beach amending the city comprehensive plan, amending chapter 14, public school facilities element, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, and providing an effective date. Okay, the second reading of public hearing will be held on a date to be determined. Yes, this is the, uh, it gets sent off to the state. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, right. Yep. So. Okay. All right, next item up, item 10A, Golf Advisory Board. So the appointment of two citizens. We have, I have five folks here. Kelly, do you have some ballots? Do you want to pass out? I do, unless somebody has a nomination. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the vice mayor nominations. Yes, I would like to nominate uh, Thomas Burgess and Gavin Fugate. Okay. Um, all right, we have two different positions. All right, um, r remind me, Kelly or Carrie, how do we, do we just take the second highest, hang on, I got Jace, I got you. These have names on them. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Here's Mike. Mike, that's yours. Um, do we just take the first and second highest vote getters in that case, or should we vote on each one like individually? I feel like we should make one nomination and vote like on that person, right? Or, or do them one at a time. Uh, that's what I'm asking. Well, <laughs> so you remember Nashida, maybe? Is that back to me? Well, how does that work? I that's what I'm saying, because I, I feel like if we do it this way, I don't know, I'd like to... Because I'm... Anyway. So here we go. Hang on, I'm Carrie's going to... I'm struggling with the, uh, the new technology. <laughs> I know you have no sympathy, Mayor. <laughs> 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 Which ones are the current ones there are none these are two vacancies oh. no, there's no reappointments okay yep my my question is we have two to do so we've gotten two nominations so far but before we went further my question was if we go through and mark two names do we just take the two highest vote getters or do we do we do no. like for one position like and then do it again for the second position well, i just can't remember about, how we do it well how about we just i'll make a motion to nominate all of them and then you can <laughs> 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 and then we're back to just taking the two highest vote getters. All right, that's fine with me. I can kill. You second. <laughs> All right, we got a motion to nominate everyone, so everyone just vote. Everyone's nominated. Put two tick marks, I guess, beside each, beside two different names, and we'll take the two highest vote getters. Is that, mm -hmm. Does that sound reasonable, Carrie? Are you okay with all this yes. so far? Pick two. Yes, pick two. Pick two. Okay.
sorry, I'll be right with no, that's you. That's right. Looking for a name. we got to get a better way to do it. Every time it's like something. <laughs> it's, wow. it's coming. No, I know, with the technology, but like... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't thought about it. All these years. Yeah. So we got a, we got a late entry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second photo. Thank you. Yeah, right. Yeah, you slip in some Chicago, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Do we have others? Nope. What's that? Vice Mayor, I'm going to start with you on the Mayor and Commission reports, just so you know. What's up next? Okay. All right. There's How one, uh, let me say there, Jason Hickman had four votes, and then two votes each are split between Thomas Burgess, Gavin Fugate, and Jonathan Thompson. So what I'll have to do is we'll go ahead and keep... Uh, so Hickman's in. Hickman and in. And we'll rebalance between those three. And you're voting for one of those three. Got so it. So let me go ahead and... That works. So that's Bur is it Burgess or Burgess? Does anybody know? I believe Burgess. it's Burgess. Okay, Burgess, Fugate, Fugate and, Thompson. and Thompson. Nominate or vote for one of those three. After this, if you would just, Kelly, go back and say how everybody voted, just so there's transparency on that. That's why we don't do voice votes, right? <laughs> I want to revisit that. Can we bring that up in January? No. <laughs> why January? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's, yeah, that would be nice. There's a 2 2 tie between Thomas Burgess and Jonathan Thompson. Okay. Two, aren't there five people? There are. There's two uh, Burgess, one Fugate, two Thompson. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can do one more ballot, and basically we're voting between Burgess and Thompson because there can't be a tie on this one. So, one more ballot Burgess, Thompson. Because we can do up to up to three, right? So, to yeah. But this one, there's, it's impossible to tie at this point. So, okay. although I don't put anything in the bottles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we haven't had a class. Yeah, we. <laughs> It's three for Thompson, uh, two for Burgess. So the two new uh, people are going to be Jonathan Thompson and Jason Hickman. Jason Hickman and Thompson. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you what, City Attorney, I think it would be acceptable if she just puts the voting in the meeting minutes rather than sit here and read out all the different ballots. Is that, is that comfortable? Is everybody okay, okay with that? Just so we have as full long as we have that public record available, yeah. Yeah, sure. just if you'll make sure to spell out in the meeting minutes the different ballots. So make sure you keep all of those. And uh, mm -hmm. if anybody has questions after the meeting, she's happy to show them to you. I'm just trying to move on. Uh, neighborhood council, two members to the neighborhood council. Are we out of ballots? Or we have. To, do we have no. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, there. Vacancy in zone three and in zone four. We have Vice Mayor Colodi. Oh, we don't need ballots. That's no, right. Yeah, we're just Vice Mayor Colodi. Uh, nomination or appointment, rather. Zone one. Zone one. Sorry. Linda Palmer. So my script says vacancy in zone three and four. Do I have the wrong data? Yeah. All right. It's three and one. Glad you guys are paying attention. All right. Zone one. One. Uh, Vice Mayor. I'm appointing Linda Palmer. Linda Palmer. Okay. 
And Commissioner McGurk, I'm your appointment. Appoint, I'm appointing Connie Meadows. Connie Meadows. All right, Linda Palmer and Connie Meadows have been appointed to the Neighborhood Council, and per our new regs we just adopted earlier, we don't need to vote on that, right? Right. Okay. There's, uh, if I might make a comment. Sure. The reason we had to do this is because we had members that went on a charter commission. Correct. Which is a short-term commission. And we're actually losing members that we had in the long run. What, what, do, you, what do you mean, who's the we? I mean, uh, we being the city, okay. is, is we had uh, valuable contributing yeah. members of the Neighborhood Council appointed for three years or something like that, who are now, have been displaced because of their desire to be on the Charter Commission. It would be nice to have a way to get them back well, at some point. <laughs> you, put yeah. on, you put them on there. <laughs> yeah, that was, was their choice. <laughs> well, that was the appoint, appointee's decision to make that choice. So I understand what you're saying, but in this case, it was self inflicted. <laughs> Question. I'm. <clears throat> go ahead, Commissioner Sachs. Uh, for my colleagues and staff, could we please do research to find out whether any other members of boards are currently on two boards? Uh, this may be the case, and it would be not fair if we had to tell some people you can't be on two boards while we have I, some pe I think other the, people on two boards. I think the issue was that specific board, Neighborhood Council, had that written in its ordinance. All the boards don't have that language, which is why we need to look at all the boards. I keep saying this, and I know we're doing it in January, because there's there's little nuances like that. Again, I, I call back Animal Control Board. You've got to own an animal. You can't live in the city. you got to be on Glencoe. Like it's, there's a whole, there's nuances in these boards that we need to tease out and, and be very clear. To me, every board should apply, or maybe no board, but we should be intentional about it. So, but in that particular case, it applies. So, um, you know, I, mm -hmm. staff, if you ever have any concerns on somebody in their service, and but I don't think we have that issue on other other boards. But so, thanks. Uh, and to Vice Mayor Sam, uh, I agree. I mean, yeah, we've got great people in the Charter Review, and it's a short-term commitment. And some are, you know, I'm sure they'll be rolled into other areas and abilities to serve after that as opportunities arise, um, be it on neighborhood council or some other some other board. So. I've got no problem with that, but I, I don't. I don't think we can solve that tonight. All right, next item up, Mayor and Commission reports. We'll start with the Vice Mayor. I had the opportunity to go to a uh, symposium on uh, uh, water policy, water protection, uh, over in Orlando. Uh, I found it uh, much better than most of the convention type of things I go to. They had a lot of information to offer. Uh, Basically, they're saying it's a brave new world, and they got all kinds of money that they want to spread around. Um, of course, that's all wishful thinking at times. But it does come to the point where, uh, and I did speak with our manager on this, is, is I think we may have to include in one of our job descriptions a person responsible for researching grants and looking for them, often out of the normal sources. Uh, you know, we're very good. We apply for a lot of things, and applying for a grant is really difficult with the paperwork and all that. But I think there may be other items out there, such as in the environmental area. There's the Doris Duke Foundation. There's Nature Conservancy, uh, which are, are very uh, much in the way of preserving the lands and the waterways. So... So you and I have never talked about this, but I can tell you he's heard that from two different commissioners independently, and he didn't tell me you had you had talked to him about <laughs> We're not it. Not allowed so, to talk. I know, yeah, that. but I've I've said the same thing. Yeah. I think we need a staff member dedicated, or at least partially dedicated, to these alternatives. So yeah, I have still your time. But I've worked independently with one of those organizations. Yeah. And, I'm hoping to bring forward. Some uh, I think there's a lot of money in this space right now, especially the environmental. Like we could be on yes. the bleeding edge of some exactly. of that. So yeah, I I agree. Uh, that's my report. Okay. Mr. Sachs. Just to piggyback on uh, Vice Mayor's report, uh, we do have a grant writer, and we should task Nancy Maddox. I believe she's our grant writer. Uh, we have uh, multiple staff that they do that. Uh, what they're asking for is specifically for a grant writer. So, 
Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I'll take it easy on you guys tonight. Um, please consider road calming devices for Magnolia. There are constituents. We need to keep them safe. It's been three and a half years. They've been pleading with us. These are inexpensive items. They do work, as they've said. You can take them up and put them somewhere else if they don't work, but they will work. And uh, it came to my attention, and actually uh, quite some time ago, uh, after the events that we have on Canal Street and Flagler, uh, the cleanup time is, is a little too long. Uh, we find full garbage cans and a lot of trash on the streets. So I hope uh, we continue this tre you know, tremendous uh, event affairs that we have affairs that we have but would that we clean up promptly after them so that uh, people feel like they live in a clean city um, and just one small request for uh, our Christmas parade will the and thanks to staff by the way the the lights on Canal Street even though we had <laughs> severely trimmed uh, trees the lights look beautiful thank you to, to staff call it please let them know um, but Will we have the lights lit for the parade? Do you know? Yes. They will be on during the parade. Very good. Yes. Okay. Thank you, guys. That's all I have. Okay. Commissioner McGurk. All right. A couple things. Um, the League of Cities has adopted the legislative initiative, the legislative policies. You all should get emails on that. The one thing we added during the um, League conference, or not the League conference, I'm sorry, like the uh, league board meeting is that we're going to piggyback on distilleries there's one here in New Smyrna and there's one in Ormond which um, the legislation is moving through and we're going to jump on that because we think it's a something we can win on and it's something we an initiative that we can push what's already moving forward and it will benefit us here in New Smyrna Beach the second thing is good news and bad news the FDOT has given a list of people, projects that were cut, projects that were pushed back years, and then projects that were pushed back a year. The bad news is we got pushed back a year. The good news is we only got pushed back a year. a year. So what this affected was the signaling of State Road 44, that whole system going in, so it's it's there it's coming i look at our fdot rep during my last tpo board meeting and she said and she says it was only a year and she's right most of the other people either got their projects completely cut or they got pushed back four or five years so i want to give you that piece of information it kind of you know we're so desperate to get it on the other hand we held on to it, and um, we had the minimal amount of damage compared to mo most people. Thank you, Mayor. Do you have a Can date I or a time? I get that for you. Okay. To, Because to, we can't talk about this outside of meetings, so yeah. question for you. Is is that for the, the adaptive signaling all, yeah. all along 44? Yes. From um, roughly 95? Yes, east. East? Okay. Yes. Um, is is there any you've got more experience in the space sitting on the various boards you do but i i remain convinced in my non-expert opinion that this the timing is off i've, I've talked about this publicly before is, is there anything stopping us from i mean that that's free to fix in, in my opinion i guess we need an expert to maybe validate it but is is there anything stopping us from doing that in the meantime looking at that during peak times or or having someone at least tell me i'm wrong that the same the, the timing is right and again what i'm speaking of is you sit at that light of mission and 44 which is what is which is where everything backs up and if you sit there and time it the cross traffic is prioritized over the through traffic the cross traffic has a minute and a half of light versus the true tra through traffic on 44 only has about a minute of light and that, that just doesn't make sense to me so that's I'm uh, gonna, so your question is so my question is could we, uh, how would we take steps to address that in the meantime? So I think, Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, the first issue is going to be with the county. I think the county has something to do with the, we do have some sort of signalization set up. Mm -hmm. It's not as 
technically advanced is what we're going for. Yeah, right. So I think the county we can talk to, you say the cross traffic, I would suspect that that may have something to do with the school that is set up because at certain times they get out. I'm, t I'm yeah, just kind of yeah, a guess. Yeah. And, and it may just be that the technology we have is is exactly why we're going for a better technology that is more adaptable to yeah. different changes throughout Makes the sense. day, not just a right. period, a, a day, you know, a week or a month or something like that. But Mayor, is it still doing it? Because I have talked to uh, Bobby Maddox, yeah, who works with the county. They maintain our traffic lights. Okay. And according to what I was told, that it was fine. But if it's still doing it, okay. I would I mean, like I, to meet him when they're out there again and, and, and go over it. But I have a certain you're saying a minute and a half for the cross? I have a set in the Burger King parking lot and timed it lately. The last time I did it, it was, but I haven't done it since we talked. So if they change something since we talked, then you know it may be, it may be different. So I can't. I'll give him a call tomorrow. Just yeah, to I, mean, I guess my question is, if, if they did action, then that's great. But if we haven't done anything because we were thinking this may be coming quickly, knowing this is delayed, which I agree, it's good good and bad news. It could have been worse. Uh, and that will certainly be, that's the future, but I'd love to just make the best of what we have right now. And I'll I, give him a call tomorrow. I, again, my non-expert opinion is I think we can make a small tweak and improve it. Mr. Mayor, yes. please, while we're on the subject, if, if I could uh, belabor you, uh, Commissioner McGurk, since you sit on the TPO staff, uh, yeah. I had spoken to Lois Bolenbeck to try to find out what apparently was on their feasibility study list, a emergency traffic signal for Station 52. Hopefully we do have the funding and apparently we have funding for 50. Uh, Lois said that she would get back to me and then silence. But she did before it was radio silence. She said, well, I don't know if this is TPO, if FDOT is supposed to fund it, it's not in our realm. So I have not gotten any answers from anybody, just kind of a kind run around. So what specifically is your question for me to check with Lois on? Check what this, either Lois, TPO, or a representative from FDOT about the signal. They said it's warranted who for station. It? Who said it's warranted, FDOT or TPO? Yes, FDOT. FDOT. Okay, so who said that they, I'm, I'm just trying we, to find, someone tell you that we were getting it? or we, is it No, mine? we have official correspondence that they are warranted. So um, what I, I thought. Yes. So. Okay, so TPO may not have anything to do with that. Give me a yes. copy of what you're talking about. Gladly. And then I'll look into that. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you for the. Sorry for the interruption. No, no, it's, it's good. It's our one chance to, right. thank you to Commissioner McGurk for representing us on. Yes on those boards. Uh, Commissioner Hartman. Um, I have a couple of things. And the first thing I, I need to do is apologize to the Wallace family. I made some comments at our last meeting that I think they may have taken personal, but it wasn't directed at them. It was more at us as a community that when we are aware of situations like that, we as a community probably should get more involved in a quicker time. So I wanted to apologize to the family if they thought I was directing it directly at them. Second thing is, um, we had our final meeting for the year. Um, and I certainly want to thank everybody from the planning staff who helped out with maps and accessories and things like that. And then the James, Babe James staff who was there to help, help, help me set up the room and uh, accomplish that sort of thing. Um, there were some good questions that came out of that. Um, certainly um, we were well representative with the various community groups that are in, in town. So I want to thank everybody that showed up for that and thank all the staff that was involved in that because I certainly do appreciate it. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, and I just have one thing, and that is actually something that I think Commissioner Sykes had brought up. Kyle, I had sent you that email the other night and said to remind me to talk to you about trash. It was that same topic. I'd heard the same thing. <coughs> I've heard the same thing a few times from merchants along Canal and Flagler that they say during the special events. So I don't know if we can work with our with our vendor or how we could try to accommodate that because I, I, and I've seen the same thing and I, I get it. I mean, it's a you know way more volume than we're used to, but if we could ramp up for the special event, make sure somebody's working during that event or something to, to keep those clear because I've, I've personally walked down Flagler and seen a, you know, a trash can that's just kind of over 
over full. So we'll never solve it completely, but if we can. Well, in the past, I think what I, what I have them do is uh, provide additional totals there. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they provided at this event or not, but yeah, we'll no. go back and I'll, I'll talk to them. Yeah, just coordination. And with that, is that staff or is that, that's our vendor, right? Or well, it's the vendor, but it's, we staff, we meet with them on a weekly basis. Yeah. So we'll just. Uh, yeah, I'd say making sure our vendor works with our, our reps, maybe from the Canal Street and the Flagler districts, and get just to get a schedule of their events so that they know when to, to ramp up that. You know, Probably not I, every event, but definitely some of the events, the yeah, bigger events. Mayor, I got Commissioner a thought, Burke. you know. Because I've seen that too. You know, would would not, in my opinion, be out of place to ask the people who hold the event to they can always come over there, pull out the garbage bags, put it in their dumpsters, and put a new bag in. Also, maybe we can encourage some of these businesses to help a little bit. The next morning, they get up, they look out there, they were part of it, they made money off of it. It was. So maybe we can, there's, this is a two-way street here. You know, we can do a better job maybe with the vendors, but maybe maybe some of those shops out there can also help. Well, let's figure out what, what the issue is exactly. Was it like a short of uh, garbage cans, or was it the short of staff being out there collecting on time? So. Yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's, that's it other than uh, happy Thanksgiving of coming to everyone. I know we're not done Thank quite you. yet, but... Uh, look forward to those holidays with friends and family, safe travels to all those staff members and citizens who may be traveling over the holidays, and make sure to attend all the local events. We've got the Light Up Canal Street and some shop local events uh, coming up right after Thanksgiving. We've got the parade coming up before our next meeting, so look forward to seeing everyone out there. Next item up, City Manager Report. Um, thank you, Mayor. <coughs> if you look in the CM report, as a matter of fact, uh, the mayor has asked to put the Magnolia on the CM report, and that's what we've done uh, on the previous meeting. Oh, yeah, okay. So on the October the 9th, uh, Commissioner Sachs, the chief, and I, we met with some of the residents of Magnolia. Uh, we went over the study that uh, the police department have done on Live Oak, uh, Magnolia, and Palmetto. And they've done it uh, on uh, Live Oak and uh, uh, Magnolia between the 3rd and the 10th. And then on Palmetto, they did it between 10th and the 17th. Um, I kind of like put out like a brief uh, numbers for you just to kind of see the difference. Uh, the speed limit probably went down a little bit, not much. But the volume has increasingly went down. Uh, in particular, uh, Magnolia between 4th and 5th, it went down about 62%. And between 7th and 8th, it went down 64%. On Live Oak, between 4th and 5th, it went down about 40%. And between 7th and 8th on Live Oak, uh, it's about 20, 26%. And then Palmetto between 4th and 5th, about 9.8 percent, and then on Palmetto between 6th and 7th, it's almost 30, 30, 31 percent. Um, in addition, we met with the residents. They want me to go on site with them, so we walked Magnolia. Um, they have selected locations where they think the speed, the speed cushions needs to be. I've reviewed the locations with them. I think they're good locations, uh, but I just want to point out the study did not recommend any of these speed cushions. But they think the residents on the on the on Magnolia, they feel like these measures needed, and they refer to the reductions in volume that we've seen on Live Oak on on uh, Magnolia. The locations are at 600 Magnolia, at 808 Magnolia. 1100 Magnolia, and also they wanted to have one at uh, north of Hamilton, which is just uh, north of the city limit. So that's four? Well, yes, four of them. And then, if you recall, uh, in the previous study, we asked for a, a stop sign at Thirds and Magnolia, and then we have some of the residents who uh, showed opposition to the sign. 
they, they want one at second in Magnolia. A stop sign it? A stop sign. And the owners, at the, you know, I've talked, one of the owners actually was here tonight. She spoke up. Um, so they are in agreement with the stop sign at second and uh, Magnolia. Um, obviously, we didn't have any money in the budget for this. This was not budgeted item. But if the commission uh, elects to proceed with one of them, all of them, some of them, uh, I have to come back to you with the, with the funding source. Con, I had a question real quick on that. Yes, sir. Come to the rest of the commission. Um, in your in your city manager report, you I mean the the reduction of volume is pretty significant. So I want to just dwell on that for just a minute. But the note said that most of the differential is likely due to, due to school traffic differential. Mm -hmm. But both of the dates, unless there's some holiday or something I'm missing, both of the dates of the study seem to be. I mean, it was done within in the October time frame. So what's the uh, the after the after study? We did like three studies. Yeah. So the first study we've done is before school. The second study was when the school was out, and the third study was done when the school was back on. So these October dates are within school being school in session. Back. Yes. So this after volume going from in that particular block, the seventh and eighth and Magnolia going from seventeen thousand to sixty three hundred, that's apples to apples, school in session, school in session. Yes. Um, so every block listed here so every every element in the study saw a decrease except in, in both speed and well no not so much speed but definitely in volume except, except uh, live, oak. live oak between fourth, fourth and, and fifth. fifth okay uh, I have more comments but I just want to make sure I had clarity on that yeah. Commissioner McGurk thank you mayor um, yeah as the mayor pointed out these are pretty impressive statistics showing a reduction what is the statistics showing on Live Oak and um, Riverside? Did we do we it? Have, we, have done, we have not done okay. Riverside, but I think the chief, I don't know if he's planning on doing Riverside later on or not, but at this study we have not. I think he's going to do it. Okay. So a couple of thoughts on these. You know, I want to make sure that if we put any more down, we have the buy-in from the homes in the that are going to be affected by this. As you know, we had the issue with the stop sign. Um, and then what I want to do is I want a clear message from Magnolia as to what they want because I don't want this coming, biting at the apple, follow it five, six, ten times. The other thing I want to point out is I have three big streets in my district that now want all of these including the flashing lights on A1A. So as we do this and we do not follow the criteria, that's a big deal. And guess what? And, and I'm sure in Vice Mayor's district and Randy's district and you're everybody's district, <laughs> everybody's, I'm sure, getting calls right now about, hey, I got a speeding problem. I want some of those things over there. So... You're first up to bat. Maybe you're going to be able to get in while they're going to good, so to speak. <laughs> and but and I but I want to point out that I'm having a lot of requests for this too. And when we don't follow the criteria, I don't get to say to my people, "Hey, there's a criteria to me," because all they do is turn around and say, "You didn't do it there." So we've. I think we need to. I'm certainly supportive. I want to make sure that when we keep doing this, that we have a, a, a buy-in from Magnolia so this just doesn't keep repeating itself. Thank you. Um, if I may uh, add. Hang on. Let's, let's uh, go ahead, Colin. Commissioner I'll McGurk, uh, when, when I went and I walked uh, the street with them and Commissioner Sachs, I have mentioned to them that they need to talk to all these locations. I think we have a confirmation on the stop sign. But as far as the locations for the speed cushions, I'm not sure if they have talked to them or not, but they know that this has to be done prior to whatever we do. Commissioner Sachs. Just food for thought, gentlemen. Engineering studies show, even though the numbers don't warrant it, 
studies show that these devices work. Eventually, people are happy. Yep. The preponderance of people are happy. It does slow speeds. It does reduce volume. I would support any colleague of mine coming to me and saying, I want to do what you did. It's the cost. It's, uh, yes, the of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, but what is the cost to lose a life? And, and we know we've already had some really bad accidents. We've had loss of life. This is a corridor that is open to the south, and it will only get worse. And it is getting worse. In fact, I sat on Dixie Highway yesterday morning at the 10th Street light and watched four cars in rapid succession avoid the light, travel up Magnolia. Hey, just, every every just morning I travel that. Yes. And I watch a line of cars peel off right yes. there. I even did it myself just yes. to follow and see what everyone's doing. <laughs> so there's no, no one's, no yeah. one's dying <coughs> there. It's the issue of following a criteria and the money to then accommodate everybody. This, uh, and don't forget, and I'll, and I'll be, and I'll be yeah. finished. This is a minimal cost compared to uh, bulb outs, uh, islands, other traffic calming devices that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is much more uh, in line with what the people want. It works. It's inexpensive. I think we should do it. Okay. Vice Mayor, I see you leaning up. No, no? it's All just right. that uh, it's inexplicable to believe that the speed humps caused such a dramatically increase in the amount of traffic on that street and all the other streets. So De decrease on the email. Decrease. Yeah, okay. Yes. Where did these cars go? US one. <coughs> not with US one under construction because that slows a lot it's of not, people down. It's not down there though. Well it's in all my years, I just can't see it having that much effect. It's not that I'm opposed to it. It's just, it's not logical. That's all. Chief, I just had a question for you not to put you on the spot, but I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this. Is there anything we're missing in this? I mean, do, do you, from kind of a boots on the ground perspective, I mean, is this, I mean, it's pretty dramatic. I mean, it, this tells me that it accomplished what we were hoping it would, which is taking some of that cut through traffic and keeping it somewhere else. Uh, it didn't come from... You know, maybe it's Riverside or US one, but what are is there is there something we're missing here? Khaled, Chief, I don't know who wants to Can't answer your question in terms of where the cars went. Yeah. I can tell you where they didn't go. So the machines are, are fairly idiot proof. Uh when a car runs over the yeah. The yeah. things that it counts the number of cars. So I can tell you that they're, the cars left Magnolia. Cars left Live Oak to a certain extent, and they left Palmetto. There's only two ways they could go, and one's up US-1 and one's up Riverside. Uh, we just yeah. finished our first study on Riverside, so I have a count there. Uh, whatever else we do on Magnolia, um, we'll do another count on Riverside to see what the difference is. Um, but we know that the cars are not on Magnolia. Okay, and, and there's nothing we're we're missing. I mean, it's there's nothing. No, that, I mean, not missing anything. It, yeah. Okay. I mean, it almost just seems like, yeah, it's pretty dramatic. I mean, it, uh, as, so yeah. As Vice Mayor said, it's it's almost yeah statistically yeah. it's impressive. That's why they work, gentlemen. Please. Yeah. And Riverside is 20 miles an hour, and they have an island. They have a roundabout. Yeah. So they have some protection. Yeah. Okay. And I would support more. Um, so, it, what action do you need from us if, tonight? If Anything? If the commission elects to proceed with these four locations, then I will come back to you on the 10th with funding source and how much. Okay. With a plan of action. So, being the one who made the original motion and you guys took it away, <laughs> I'll make a motion that we put a stop sign at second he and has, Magnolia. He hasn't got over that. <laughs> um, and the purpose is not for the, the speed, but it, it gives a break in the traffic so pedestrians can safely cross the street. And I originally wanted it at third, but second would work the same way because it will give them access to the live oak. It gives them access to the library so they can safely cross the street. A stop sign is $54. I don't know how much a pole costs or how much labor it takes to dig a it's very, uh, punch hole. Very cheap, and it'll be done tomorrow. Yeah, so, so I think the stop not... sign at, at Second and Magnolia is certainly a cheap, easy thing to fix right away. Kay. And then we can look 
um, at something in the future if, if the rest of you want to go there. But I would be opposed to any more speed humps. I think we've accomplished the mission there. Um, what I saw in the speed numbers were they were still at the 35 or 30 number, but we don't have the 70s and the 90s that we had with the original study. So I think it did work on the speed. It's made more people be consistent with what the speed limit was, and most of them were only like three or four miles over the speed limit. So uh, as an easy fix now, my motion is to put a stop sign uh, at 2nd and Magnolia. Okay, I have a motion. Phone, Mr. Mayor. To, well, hang on, we've got a motion on the table. So I'll I have second a, it. I have a second on that motion. Do you have comments G on that motion? or Gentlemen, those, those speed humps were placed there as part of a study. They do not solve the problem at either end of the corridor. They may have reduced the speed a bit. They may have reduced the volume. They have not made that corridor significantly safer. If the, if the people that live on that road, over 100 people have signed this do, their, their petition, and they've signed two documents that say they want protection at either end of that corridor. So I would consider that. And you guys okay. make what motion you will, but you have the uh, the people's request, and I think they're very reasonable. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the stop sign. That doesn't preclude us from doing something on the, the other, um, but we have a motion and a second on the stop sign. Um, City Clerk, for you. It, it, Commissioner McGurk? Yeah, call yes. it off. Commissioner Sachs? This is a motion this to is support the stop sign. Stop sign at 2nd and Magnolia. Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Gentlemen, they will I, be back. I, I, how much do the speed humps cost? Do we remember roughly? Yeah. Um, I could tell you the, the one section is about $600 to $700 and if you use four of them because it's in some sections it's wide so four times 700 is $2,800 for one stop one so cushion. So three six so we're talking about 12000 uh, And then in some sections we had three. Yeah. So, so we're in the 15 grand range ballpark. I mean. Okay. Motion to add the speed humps. Just make it motion on speed humps. So I have a motion from Commissioner Sachs, but four speed humps, I'm assuming, at these four locations called out by yes. staff. 600, 800, yes. or 808, 1100, and North Hamilton. A motion on the table. Not hearing a second. Motion dies for lack of a second. I'm, I'm not opposed to this. I, I think Commissioner McGurk's caution is, is well made. However, it's hard to argue that you know, the data we've seen, the results are there. These aren't that cost prohibitive. I mean, we're talking 15 grand. Um, so I, 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 guess I think there's pros and cons to it. I, I agree with you. I just, but. I guess I can support two. And to <laughs> offset instead of the four, two. But anyway, that's what I, I, I can support. That. May, I, may I speak to but. Commissioner McGurk? Yep, and then uh, we're going to move on. Thank you. That is that is more reasonable, and and I would suggest those two end up at the far ends of that corridor where the people suggested they go. Okay. I, it's, do I have a do I have a motion on this item? Do you want to make another motion? So go ahead. At at the south end. North and south. North end. North and south. I mean, you only have two blocks before you hit a stop sign. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't understand that. So I don't job, understand what the purpose of the one up by Hamilton. Is. It's um, their concern is when you're coming off of Magnolia to your Swan, you will be at a speed. Most of the time is like probably in the 50s, 55. Why well, came so off that? You mean coming off time. US one? From US Magnolia? one into yeah. Magnolia because yeah, you, I did that. I came right into a stop you sign. You hit a stop sign. Well, the stop sign is at night. That's two blocks away. No, yeah, I got to tell you. So I, I think if maybe Edgewater and us we, we don't own do a road, speed trap for a two-block section because half of that's Edgewater. And we have no control but, over that. This is, Hamilton is the, I guess, is the line. So this would be 
north of Hamilton. That's where they want it. So between Hamilton and 10th? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to defer to my fellow commissioner. He spent a lot of time with his residents. It's his zone. Um, so I, I'll, I'll defer to my fellow commissioner. Gentlemen. He stood out there for probably some time, and you could see the traffic, especially coming in from your swan, they will be at a higher speed than when they get inside. Gentlemen, you're talking about saving lives. I, you know, we stood out there and watched people, elderly people on bicycles and children coming out after school. This yeah. is a very active, dangerous street. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion or to move on on this topic. So to have a motion, I think you've heard you've got some support for two. Uh, I'd, I'd say make a motion spelling out the two locations. Um, I, I hear North Hamilton and then wherever the other ones would be proposed, but I'll leave that up to you. I'll second that motion. No, I'm not making a motion. I'm asking, I'm asking if you... I didn't make a motion. He didn't make a motion. I think I'll make a motion for two. At which locations? Manager, Mr. Manager, if you could help yeah, me out it's, here. Yeah, uh, it's the north, have north, of north, Hamilton, north of Hamilton. 1100, 808, and 600. Why don't you Is 1100 the select two and then have the residents select yeah. the other one? That's fair enough. Or why don't you just let the residents select the two where they want it? That's, That's the better idea. Because otherwise it's... Why don't we move the two we have? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they we, we did discuss that, and they're, they're very pleased with the ones they have now. I did ask them that. I, I spoke to our manager about that. They didn't have plans to move those. I think if you add two more, you're really protecting that corridor. And don't forget, if you have real problems, move them to commit to Commissioner McGurk's zone. Or so Mr. Hartman. we haven't finished that motion yet. Which is 1100 on the north end, or is 600 on the north end? Which Why way is it? Make the motion. The 600 is on the north end. Okay. Y'all do whatever you want with them. So, all right. I'll go with that. All right, we have a motion for two, motion for two speed humps on Magnolia to, for Commissioner Sachs to work with staff and the residents to figure out where those are placed. And, you know, the, the ones that it's from 600 north, and as you go down, you go south. So, so is that so unacceptable? Can you accept that motion? Accept All right, so we have a motion on the table for two speed humps on Magnolia as determined by Commissioner Sachs and Kentucky. Four guys, half a day to put them in. I'll give you the, the entire cost. You have an entire cost. Acknowledging we only have to find the money. To uh, we will be advertising internally tomorrow. Okay. For a week. Um, I have indicated to all the directors and the city staff, anybody who's interested to apply, we will have a, a, a selection panel, uh, the HR director, myself, and a citizen. So um, we'll do the interviews, hopefully, and if we have the interviews done, and we have a candidate either will come back to you on the 10th or on January 14th, depending on how fast we do the interviews. What okay. happens if the HR director applies? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have asked, and it uh, doesn't seem like she's interested to apply. So if she does apply, then I have to look for somebody yes. else. <laughs> I, I have a question about the citizen. Yes. Um, help me with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure a citizen should be someone who is well uh, my my idea this is it's like a succession plan uh -huh. so um, i'm hoping that the next uh, assistant city manager will be a city manager at some point so i figured that if i have a citizen that will have some inputs i think i value that okay i'm gonna let you run with this but in the future i think that it raises some concerns for me. Okay. I, that's, I just wanted to state that. Thank you. So uh, two two things that I I like where I like where you're going with that. I like the citizen engagement. I, I agree with Commissioner McGurk. I mean, my you know, it's like we, we definitely want to involve citizen. I, I worry, you know, that that become if there's equal weighting, all of a sudden, then we have you know one citizen who could reflect. You know, it's great we have a citizen involvement, but now that that's just one citizen view. Um, so I, I would say having them participatory, but it's it's your decision. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you've absolutely. Get, you've got to live with the decision. This is somebody you're going to work with in the trenches, blood, sweat, and tears. So having somebody else to bounce it off of and talk through it with, uh, I completely agree with. I, I would suggest you know, 
uh, other other folks like uh, Carrie to you know be a part of that process because this again is a position that you guys are all in the trenches together. Um, so having a citizen involved, so there's kind of transparency. I'm fine with, but it's your decision. This is this is your this is your person's got to be able to run with you. Um, and then just for clarity, and I, I don't remember where we landed on this, but I brought up at some point concern on this this notion of us approving hires that we haven't interviewed, we haven't talked to, and all of a sudden it's to us to approve. So my indication is what we're doing tonight is we're authorizing you to go do this, and you're not bringing that name back, and we're going to vote on the person and who you hire. That's on you. If we don't like the kind of people you hire, we're going to we're going to yeah, we're going to talk to you, <laughs> so you're not going to bring that back to us for a vote I'm eventually bring it on that back person. To you this, this is, is who you've it. this is who you've chosen. Just so there's clarity on that, because that yeah. that puts us yeah. in a bad spot as we've talked about before. So that's why we're um, doing this tonight. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for doing that, and uh, I, I like where you're, I like where your heads at though. I like bringing the citizens in. I'm okay with it, but it's it's on it's on you. <laughs> Vice Mayor, I'd prefer not to have the citizen involved. Okay. All right. Not to have the citizen, you said? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess if... I think we'll... I mean, we're deferring to you, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm saying direction. if the commission uh, collectively don't want the citizen, I'm fine, you know, with it, with the, what I have. I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's my decision. But having a citizen involved, I think, would be, you know, would be good. Well... Hey, my only concern is, and I'm perfectly content with you making that decision without consulting anyone to tell you the truth. It just, um, it invites all the backbiting. Who's the citizen and who appointed them and why they appoint them and all that. It, it brings a political aspect into it, which I don't think there should be. And I was just going to say, keep the commission kind of totally out of it. I mean, if you... If, if you want to have somebody you bring in as uh, to you know consult and meet with a person and make sure they can interact with the general public, that's that's kind of where I think he was going with it, and so that's that's on that's on him. So I, I'll stand by. I defer to Khaled, whatever he however he chooses to lead that process, however will lead him to choosing the right person to sit beside him for four hours every Tuesday. <laughs> so, all right. He's a citizen. That's Just right. Say it. Yeah, that's right. Carrie is a citizen. Riggles a Shane's a citizen. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, any? Is that it for you? Yeah, thank you. All right, City Clerk. I don't have a report. Okay. Thank you. City Attorney. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, oh, sorry. Are we not going to do the same thing with the assistant clerk's position? Oh, I'm so sorry. We started to advertise that HR did yesterday, um, and it's going to be out for one week, and then. Um, if that doesn't pan out, we'll put it out externally for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And that's, again, deferring to Kelly. Her and I have talked about it. That's just looking for her to bring in talent that can serve alongside her. Yeah. Uh, city attorney report. Just one quick one. Um, you guys have probably gotten class action mailers in your mail. The city got one for its national national prescription opiate litigation. Mm -hmm. It's in the Northern District of Ohio. It's 13 different defendants, manufacturers, distributors, and real retailers. Um, there's two RICO claims, two Controlled Substance Act issues. Uh, the judge certified a negotiation class that it's, it's all counties, parishes, boroughs, cities, village, municipalities. Uh, it's some new mechanism in, in the class action rules. And in this one, if you don't opt out you're in, and the deadline to opt out is on November 22nd. The goal is to facilitate proposed settlements. It maximizes our negotiating power. Um, the hope is to recover money to help fight opioid epidemic, provide prevention and treatment services, and change defendant's practice. Talk to Chief. He has no objection to staying in. I don't see a downside to staying in. Uh, just wanted to consult you all. Any objections to staying in? None. Seeing none? Yeah. And that's it. Okay. If no other business for the commission, thank you, citizens and staff who are still here tonight. This meeting is adjourned.